ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to the official English, English language broadcast of the Overwatch Pacific Championship. My name is Matt Pixie Carroll and joining me here tonight is, of course, Kevin Avril Walker. How are you feeling? Much better. I'm in a, I'm in a pretty good move. I feel exactly like how you sound right now, so ah, that's pretty good, good. good. You were worse before? What is that supposed to be? I don't know. I don't well, know. in any case, today we've got a pretty good set of matches well, coming I was like up. I said pretty good. Week. Come on, man. We've got a pretty great set of matches. We are about to kick off the first few games of the second round robin of this tournament, second out of four. And we're going to be kicking it off with Flash Rules versus Matchy Esports. Here is Matchy. Well, that is Matchy, and uh, like we said a moment ago, coming up against them is going to be Flash Wolves. So these two teams did meet before, and uh, Flash Wolves had the home advantage, but for the second round, Robin. Flash Wolves are going to be the away team, which is why we get to see Matchy first. So here is Flash Wolves. And there you have it. So like I said a moment ago, Flash Rules tonight, the away advantage, and this is the second well, time. Well, the disadvantage, probably, yeah. but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said away Can't advantage. wait for the away advantage. Really, that's, when you really, that's when you really the got it. The away advantage. They've got the away <laughs> advantage. It's just really want to be on the away side. Go away. <laughs> They're actually going to be on the away side twice in a row. And like I it said uh, last true. time these teams met, uh, Flash Rules did have the home side, and they also won. Uh, so uh, maybe for those who didn't actually get to see the first time these two teams met, what were our kind of thoughts on that matchup, Flash Wolves versus Matchy? Well, they were, you know, they were both three. I'll say it's for both the matchups. Flash Wolves obviously playing a back to back. They're going up against Matchy and AHQ, and both of those were three and O victories in the favor of Flash Wolves. Now, um, that being said, this was also Flash Wolves being on the home side twice. Now they're on the away side twice. I think for for Machi in particular, because it is the first match. Now, Machi have had a full round robin to sort of improve. I think Flash Wolves already had a pretty dominant position, as it were, um, going to the first round robin. For every other team below that, it was playing catch up. So I'm kind of unsure about just how much Machi you're going to benefit from the home advantage. That being said, though, I do believe that with the full round robins with the practice, they should be bringing something new or at least better to the table. Yeah, I suppose. Um I think the big question, uh, not just for this matchup, but actually for tonight as a whole, because Flash Wolves did win these two matchups previously in the first round, Robin, the question is, has the gap closed or widened? You know, are these teams now a bit closer to Flash Wolves? Maybe can they even beat Flash Wolves? I feel like that's more of a question, in fact, for AHQ. Mm. Um, or has the gap widened? The Flash Wolves now even better? Because they too have had a full round Robin, and funnily enough, Speaking looking the at the standings, yeah. Because one of the things we noted about the standings, which funnily enough is still true, uh, all of these teams have beaten the teams below them and lost the teams above them, which sounds really obvious, but it's actually surprisingly unusual. So that kind of tells you pretty much exactly where Flash Wolves are relative to these two teams. Yeah, sitting pretty at number two, they only lost to Blank, which was kind of the game you would say that that definitely was the game they were, uh, I would suppose, expected to lose. I, I don't want to use the word expected, yeah. but... If it felt any like game they were going to potentially lose, it was going to be that one. Now, yeah. Flash Wolves were even said by Blank to be probably the favourites coming into the entire tournament. And I, oh, still that, I still believe that to be the case. Now, for Machi, they're playing a lot of catch-up. And like you've said, has that gap now closed? It's a big question. Yeah, and uh, to kind of uh, touch on that as well, I mean, Flash Wolves, yeah, they are still a favourite. Like, it wouldn't be absurd to say this is a team that is probably going to take a playoff spot. I know we're only just at the top of the round, uh, second round Robin, mm. sorry, but that's that's not an, a far-fetched thing to say. It's quite reasonable, given their current record, given the fact that the only team they've lost to to blank uh, is blank. What is even going on? <laughs> um, and the question we're actually having is, has the gap closed or widened, right? And mm -hmm. there's still every chance that it has widened, because this is also a team that is going to have look at, looked at that loss to blank and gone, I don't want that to happen again. Let's really push for that. So with that being their goal, I wouldn't be surprised if they've kind of gone a little bit beyond some of these other teams because the other teams, they're not going, I've got to be blank. They're going, okay, I've got to be Fireball, then HKA, then AHQ, then Flash Rolls, and then maybe blank. 
Yeah, you've got a bit of a race between four and I would say about fourth and sixth where those are the teams really vying for the top three positioning. And the top three is, of course, what gets you into the playoffs. So Machi is kind of sitting in that ballpark. Yeah. Um, but so let's refresh ourselves real quick on Machi's lineup. Of course, Kent, known as Kiyomi, DCR1, no talk and rest yet. And he actually brought up something quite interesting about DCR1. Uh, he actually previously played on the Flash Wolves roster. No, well, not exactly the Flash Wolves roster, but um, him and three of the Flash Wolves member used to play on the Stay Frosty roster, which is... Uh, stay, uh, stay Froster. Stay... Stay Frosty. <laughs> the Stay Frosty roster, yeah. yeah the stay, the stay Frosty roster, which also had Jin Cow on it. So it was it was um, it was Jin Cow DCR one, along with Bacon Jack, K Momo, and Sinclair, and one other player whose name escapes me currently. But yeah, but Jin Cow, of course, being on AHQ, kind of interesting. Jin Cow's actually on uh, Hong Kong Attitude. You're quite right. Yes, my memory has just failed me there. It. My apologies. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I mean, we're kind of touching on a couple of things. I mean, this being the top of, of the second round, Robin. But I feel like that also creates more disconnect than there actually is. Because also, it's not like there's been a break, right? It's not like these teams have gone away for a while and then they're coming back at it, right? There is in uh, the scoreboard sense, uh, in that this is a definable point, but... Actually, these are still back-to-back -back weeks of gameplay. This is exactly the same as what they had for the first three weeks of the tournament. That, that has not changed at all. So it's going to be interesting um, because they're coming into the second round robin now with all of these things that they need to maybe work on without actually having had a break, right? This is still going a breakneck pace. They don't... Um, or rather, they are still going to be having those same things like their mental fortitude and their ability to adapt, tested, and we're coming closer and closer to that crunch. Speaking of that crunch, you know, that's the top three that I'm kind of talking about here. It's actually really important to secure yourself not only in that top three, but you want to be the number one because the number one placing among that top three immediately go to the grand finals. And we're going to take a look at the Flash Wolves lineup as we're sort of talking about that. And we've got Zondo, Bacon Jack on that offense role. These two have been working so well together as a DPS duo. Jong and K Momo as well on the two tanks. And then, of course, K Momo and Sinclair right at the end. And Realmond. And actually, yeah. Realmond. Yeah. That's the one. He's there too. There's, yeah, you've got um, a decent... I mean, a, a pretty players. stacked lineup. Let's be frank. It's a, it is a pretty stacked lineup. It, and this is a good lineup. And it is provably so because they are second in the standings. That doesn't happen by accident. And you know, every single time we've seen these guys play, we've, you know, we've identified different players for different reasons. And this guy's good for this reason. This guy's good for this reason. And they are always going to be trying to push the threshold. And like I said, tonight is really going to be that big test. And the big test for Flash Wolves as well is they're chasing after the number one spot that Blank currently has. So this is kind of a must win for them mm. in the sense that... They can't afford to drop it. In the sense that these are the kind of games, uh, with all due respect, this is an expected game or a match rather that Flash Wolves are expected to win. Mm. If they drop this to Machi for whatever reason, they're getting further and further away from that number one spot and Blank are just sort of going further and further beyond um, Flash Wolves' reach. And Flash Wolves are that team that are right on Blank's tail, and their goal isn't to stay on the tail, their goal is to overtake Blank, so they can't yeah. afford to drop any of these sort of matches that well, they are expected to win, yeah. And interestingly enough as well, I mean, if they dropped a match or even a map or two to AHQ, you know, that would very much be true. Uh, and then on top of that, with this matchy matchup here, mm -hmm, matchy matchup, um, if they did actually drop a map or two, they would also then have to go, why did we just drop a map to the, the sixth place team? And they'd actually have other things they need to go away and analyze, which would be quite frightening if you if they are, like you say, wanting to overtake blank, which they absolutely are. So with that all in mind, with uh, with the stage kind of set as it were, first map of the night is of course gonna be Lee Jung Tower. This has become quite a common trend now for these first map picks, control, and we've kind of talked about why. Uh, I feel like a lot of it comes down to safety for these teams. It's very Yeah, it's usually safe. being Lee Jung or Oasis. And Oasis sort of less mm. popular and then and this funnily, is Machi's funnily enough AHQ are the only team that really uh, from the research that I've done they're the only team that consistently will pick Nepal and mm. so far the only team that will consistently pick Ilios has been Fireball every other mm. team has realistically gone for Lee Jung or if not then a Oasis but majority of the time it has been Lee Jung and you're right it probably is a safe pick at this rate yeah um, and I mean just kind of speak yeah. to that safety as well when you're matchy coming into this matchup I mean maybe Flash Wolves they, uh, to be honest they'd probably still go for Lee Jung if they were home team right now but you know when you're Flash Wolves in this position maybe you do actually pick something like Nepal like something uh, like Ilios something that you're not as comfortable on so that you can kind of test yourself out in a real competitive environment against a team that you maybe feel you're more expected to win against so for matchy 
this is unsurprising because of those safety reasons. They I, aren't the team here that is going to pull something you out know of the what? bag like Napoleon. I kind of expect, I kind of want a team like Machi, who are not favoured to win, to be able to pull something out of the bag. This is the opportunity. You're on the home team, you've got three map picks, or you get up to three map picks, but at least two map picks, one of which is being controlled to start with. Now, if you have practised these other control maps that you don't expect Flash Wolves to practise because realistically you have a you have a finite and a limited amount of time to get through all the maps and the majority of maps being played in control has been Lee Jung that's going to be the primary map that all teams practice now if you're practicing other control maps such as Nepal and Ilios that have been quite rarely picked and with the, with the assumption that Flash Wolves aren't going to practice that as much this is your opportunity to bring that out now because it is your pick and for a team like Machi, they should be taking advantage of that home situation. It's actually quite a good point because if we look at another team in, I would say a similar situation being Fireball, they are a team that very consistently picks Ilios. And it's because they feel incredibly comfortable on it, sure, but, you know, that's their pick, right? They, you know, they do that. They leverage that position, like you say. And uh, yeah, it's quite interesting, I think. Uh, so getting stuck right into this, right? This is pretty expected lineups out of the two, to be honest. Yeah, pretty heavy with the... Um Dive coming sort of from both teams. You're missing the Tracer on the Machi side, which might hurt them damage-wise a little bit. They're going to be running with that triple tank. The Flash Rules, on the other hand, triple DPS, pretty expected. A lot of teams are kind of moving into this sort of sort of uh, composition now, but came home on the Soldier. I don't think I've seen that before, and that's going to be an interesting pick for them. Yeah, very interesting indeed. And actually, it was Machi getting the first pick onto Flash Rules, which really kind of opened this up. And now Bacon Jack going ahead and swinging back. This is not at all unsurprising. Kind of, you know, pulling the weight like we so often see. But you did actually this. get the first cap. Look, they did, they did, because of a good opening skirmish. But I mean, that is a really convincing uh, strike back by Flash Wolves. And that's Machi with two ultimates they couldn't use because that's Bacon Jack was so quick on his. I think uh, Machi are going to eventually kind of just fall over to the amount of damage output Flash Wolves can really do here. They have control of the point now. They have all the open space. You have two mobile DPSs. I don't see any way for Machi to be able to really catch these guys aside from a good Graviton Surge. Even then, oh. there are a lot of opportunities to get out of that. Yeah, Kmomo kind of forcing the uh, Biota Grenade is what I'm trying to say. Can't good go challenge try and Ken. block. Yeah, good challenge, but he's already kind of lost a lot of his health. He's going to have to throw out the ult. Here comes in now a dive. They're going to try and keep this one alive. They should be able to keep this one going. Uh, Bacon Jack, if he can keep himself alive. They should be fine, and they're really just waiting for the pick. They've got the damage, like you said. The longer the fight goes on for, the better they will naturally do, just because of their sheer output, provided they aren't getting picked. And that's not what's happening here. So here now comes the cleanup from Flash Wolves, and wow, big round of kills right towards the end there, and uh, not too unexpected. But I kind of want to go back to this matchup. This is really, really interesting. Single tank Winston. That's fine. That's honestly fine. That's expected when you're running triple DPS. Now, the only thing... Uh, with the triple DPS as well. I guess Soldier's probably fine before Control Center. Good news for Machi here is Transcendence was used by Flash Wolves in the previous fight. Even though Machi had the area control, kind of feel like that really works in Machi's favor that they forced the Transcendence out. That may or may not have been really required to use, but this is now Machi again Ooh. trying to fight for that yeah. control. And K-Momo's on the side. They are picking up the kills this time. Opening it up, yeah. And there was a good pick to start with Nona taking out Bacon Jack as now he's opening up on the rest of the team. And because of how Flash Wolves have to position because of their team comp, they actually did leave the point kind of exposed. Machi took great advantage of that. And now they're setting up what is now a pretty expected defense here. Flash Wolves decide to save Oh, pretty. rip. Bacon Jack's going to kind of cut that one loose there. He's going to force them back. Yeah, so this is exactly, you know, in terms of the mobile DPS is Bacon Jack's forcing positioning from Machi. Now, they're able to get every single angle, even on the sort of re-attack. Now they just have to wait out the sound barrier, then they can, yeah. go, hard. They can go completely cam with all the DPS ultimates. Very Here early, comes Zonda. Very early sound barrier forced out, actually, and uh, Zonda really just opening this one up. I mean, even going down there, he's already done the groundwork, and the trade back doesn't really mean much when most of the team is dead. Kent actually got bumped out of that mech really early in that fight and was able to get back in it, so going back out again, and then dying means he gave up a ton of ult charge to Flash Wolves while also losing the fight. And when you pop sound barrier that quickly before the other team has actually committed any ultimates, the other team doesn't have to commit onto you at all. The other team doesn't have to take that engagement. They They're just mobile. have to they wait. Back off. They just have to wait for sound barrier to finish. This is exactly what Flash Wolves did. Then they turn on the heat. They use the ultimates, and now they're in control oh. again. 
Graviton Surge yeah. is the big weapon for Nacho that they have to get a lot done here. Good job actually getting the uh, getting the nano boost out before going down, but honestly on DCR1, it's not really doing enough. He does get another one off to the side. Kamomo kind of struck back quite nicely. They don't really have the rest to follow this up. Singly going to throw out the Transcendence though, and with Jongi running the ultimate out as well. They should be able to start cleaning it up just the sheer margin. If Bacon Jack gets in with his pulse bomb, yes he does. Kiyomi down a second time, so no heals later on in this one. Bacon Jack now has to be this DCR1. up. Yeah. No Primal Rage available for him just yet. And uh, that's going to be that for the first one. Flash Orb is looking pretty solid. That's important to note because he was previously playing the Rhine Hunt. Now, I didn't see the Earth Shatter really come out into effect. I don't believe he even got a successful Earth Shatter, if at all, throughout that entire round. Um, the important thing is because he played Reinhardt throughout the majority of that map, he jumped on Winston so late, he didn't have a chance to get onto the Primal Surge. Without the Primal Surge, there's no way for him to really be able to stall out that cat. Now, as soon as Flash Wars had control, the lack of DPS options, the lack of damage output from Machi really hurt them. And the sort of final change-ups to their compositions as well, so late into the game, those players will not be able to have any ultimates into effect at all, either. Yeah, and another thing we kind of saw there, I mean, as much as I, that was a pretty good showing to start off for Machi, we're still seeing a few of those unforced errors with the ultimates. This is a big change for Machi as well. The composition yeah. is entirely flipped. It's uh, done a 180. Kind of copied Flash Rules in a way. It is the exact lineup they're copying, yeah. Here we go. Well, we'll have to see how the opening skirmish goes again because uh, this time there is the trade back from Flash Rules as they take out Cat. Now, no talk as well. It's more than a trade back. This is actually kind of even here. One more for Machi and uh, actually. Bacon Jack off the edge there, going down means that's going to be that match. You do actually kind of barely get the secure, but both teams are kind of going to come back full force in the second fight now. Nones was the one that really opened that up for Machi as well. Got the initial, he got the initiation on the team. Now Bacon Jack tried to get a little bit of damage back, but I feel like Flash Wars lost way too many members by the end of that engagement. Machi are in the same sort of leading position they were in terms of cap. And they have the control of the areas. Oh, you see they're getting these early picks one more time. Yeah, good dive to get out Singler from that one. And without that one healer there, really, the rest were kind of easy picking. Zonda cannot do all of that work. And uh, now that Machi are a little bit more in control of both the point and the ultimate economy, we're starting to see Flash Wolves not struggling, but certainly not finding an opening. Well, Flash Wolves are just saving ultimates. They don't have to engage any ultimates until they feel comfortable. Uh, and comfort for them would be to have some sort of advantage. They do have a pulse bomb. It's not really enough to go for for a full engage, especially not if you're going to lose your tank straight off the bat as well. well Bacon Jack commits anyway, though. It's kind yeah. of a waste. He just completely he, he absolutely does. And uh, I mean, we see this so often. Bacon Jack often puts the team on his back, but if he's not able to do that, maybe if he's trying a bit too hard to do that, it's actually starting to hurt them a little bit. They lost a couple of others on the back end of that, which kind of evens up the ultimates here. And it really shouldn't have because Flash Wolves didn't have to commit to that fight. Jongi died. Cool, you can back up, you can re-engage. Because they lost that fight, they fed, they fed so many else to Machi. Machi actually back oh. again now. You got Nonia sitting on Dragon Blade. 62%, this is a lot. That was a good pick on Kanto to start it off. He's just respawned now, so we will be able to come back into the fight. But if Flash Wolves can clean up quick, smart, which they're trying to do with this Dragon Blade. Sam Barry negating it quite well, though. Is Nonia's Whoa, Whoa Nonia's down. Oh, but Zonda right at the last second of that one catches Nonia's at the top second of his. Nice moves there. Now Bacon Jack kind of Bringing the heat back again. Does unfortunately go down to Kanji. Was able to get back in the fight. And actually that might be all the mileage they need. Zonda's kind of on the ropes and on the run. And Jongi, the ultimate, has run out already. Sinkler, he's got a transcendence in a moment. But that might not be enough if there isn't enough team to kind of heal up on the point with it. Now they're making the rush for it. Jongi, they're trying to get DCR1 down. Who is going to buy some time for his team. By ulting. Now they're going to throw out the transcendence. Looking pretty solid. Well set up. I don't really like Picking that Picking up DCR1. I don't think it was necessary. But a secure is a secure. And at 99%, I think they can count themselves happy. I think Zonda was the big turnaround in that previous fight. They're still getting kills. This is good delay and they need all the time Very they can important. get. Now for Munchie, Ooh, Bacon Jack. they got a lot of time to burn. They can save ultimates here. They don't have to push. They don't have to do, make any sort of full commit. Play the oldest fights. Bait the ultimates out of Flash Wolves and they should be able to take it back. They got all the time they want to work with but they can't waste any of it either. Now again, Zonda was the big turnaround there. He killed Nonez during Nonez's Dragon Blade. That allows Zonda to get the full conversion of the rest of the kills onto Munchie. Unfortunately for Bacon Jack, threw out the pulse bomb, didn't get it. Whoa, went down wow. Here. That's a huge winner for Machi, and they just open it even wider now. They can't even get the kill on Kiyomi here. Nones starting to clean up now. The point is wide open for Machi to come in with a cap of their own. If Flash Rolls aren't careful, there they are set up on the point. DCR1 going to stop any follow up here for Flash Rolls, try and cut off the retreat as well. Stop anyone from contesting the point. With the overtime ticking down, Machi, they should be just set up enough to hold this one out, and there's something crazy comes out from Bacon Jack here. 
so many of these fights have been determined by Genji's losing the ultimate straight at the top of the fights. Now look, the Transcendence is still available for Flash Wolves. This could be entirely different. I don't want to write them off just yet, but um, well, it's actually going 50-50 here. Yeah, the team could still take this, and I think Flash a couple of key picks here. actually for Flash Wolves. Machi, they were set up on the point. Flash Wolves, though, in losing the fight where Machi capped the point, were able to get a couple of kills on the back end. So Machi didn't actually have themselves set up on the point when Flash Wolves came swinging back, and that's actually tipped the balance once again. I think this will be coming into a, a potential real winning fight for Machi. They've got two support ultimates that can completely count out, uh, counter out the DPS ultimates for Flash Wolves. And Flash Wolves, they have to commit it because they can't afford to lose. That's a big opening. Fights. Oh, okay, Momo and going down at the top well. with the attack visor open means that is a huge resource not there for them. And it's going to force out a transcendence from No Talk here as they try and get themselves set up. Nice boot nice by four Realman, kills already. But it's probably not enough. Yeah, as Flash Wolves as good as wiped here. Okay, Momo only just respawning. Over time, going to tick down pretty quick smart. Zonda can maybe get a toe on it to contest it, but no, no such luck. And Machi, strike on back. And just the sort of subtle differences in when you decide to use these ultimates, particularly the the support ultimates. I have a, I'm a real kind of stickler for reactively using support ultimates to counter out another ultimate, primarily a DPS ultimate. Now, when Sinclair used the transcendence against, um, I believe it was DCR One's Primal Rage, I don't think that was worth it at all. Do you, you don't use the transcendence against the Primal Rage. It's not a good ultimate trade for you. Now, had they kept that transcendence, they could have probably used it to save the next fight against the, DC, against the DPS ultimates coming out of Machi. Um, and that's a big deal. Just that one sort of decision-making right there cost Flash Wolves a lot of momentum in, in, in their play. And we saw Machi have the opposite problem the round before, throwing out the sound barrier a bit too early, not using it reactively. So. Perhaps both of these teams kind of falling prey to a little bit of the same mistake here. Bit of a change in the lineups here, though. We're going to have the Pharah coming up from Nones now. Flash will decide they don't want to keep the triple DPS any longer. Bacon Jack, sight strain on Restia, pays off for him, and that could be the pick to open the fight out. Provided Bacon Jack doesn't go down, he's going to be well safe. There's a pick off Kant as well, and uh, Nones does not have the aerial superiority here, doesn't really have the dominance to keep the rest of the team from dying. And uh, good play by Flash Wolves, just basically ignoring the Pharah, killing everyone else instead. That's fine, I mean, the strat really is, you go up against the Pharah, you can either kill the Pharah in focus, or, or you ignore her and kill everyone else. That's exactly what Flash Wolves did. And for Nones, if that's happening to his team, he needs to have a lot more impact. And I don't think he really had the damage up that he needed to be able to push Flash Wolves back. Oh, can't getting taken out as well. At this rate, even when Kiyomi gets the res, he's going to be, be a pulse bomb, bomb as well. Yeah. yeah, pulse bomb as well. He might just try and take out Restia first, but he's wasted the time of Flash Wolves. At, sorry, at, of Machi, rather, at any rate. Well, he manages to save his pulse bomb anyway. Good positioning by Flash Wolves sort of just pushes Machi out without them having to spend any more additional ults. And now here comes the nano boost. Ooh. They do pick off Sinclair, but yeah, the Nano Boost is under his hunt for something with the Dragon Blade, but he can't really find anything. That was a Nothing's bit of a in range. And uh, that's a better sound barrier now here out of Realmit to keep things going. And Restia as well, but he is still the team on the back foot, waiting for Kiyomi's res. But even as it comes up, the team is going to kind of respawn. Nones gets picked off. And even then, that's an awkward time to res. They may just have to try and brute force this one or seed it to Flash Wolves. And Flash Wolves has a few ultimates in the bag, are happy to drag it out. There's the res out now. Flash Wolves can commit the rest of their resource. Open it up with a pulse bomb on Kiyomi. Okay. Now Resty is sure to go down here, a couple of shots away. Actually going to be able to back off. Known as not enough mileage from the Rocket Barrage. And again, Flash Wolves well set to hold on to this fight. The fight's not quite over yet. I feel like Flash Wolves committed ultimates a little bit too late there in Machi. They got their respawners back out. So the, the effect of the ultimates Flash Wolves did, that did end up committing is kind of just being worn off now. Machi have the superior spawns. Their reinforcements are getting to the point way quicker. They do and they don't. They kind of are because of Nones, but he gets to a point where, I mean, he can only shoot onto the point. He can't really be on the point. They are still going to get the cap through. I think that's safe play by Flash Wolves. They could have maybe drawn it out, but it would have just been, you know, a coin flip. It would have been who gets more frags. Not safe to do that. They're going to back off, look for a more favorable fight. It was a really disappointing sort of um, a defense by Flash Wolves because the Nano Blade really got nothing done. And when you commit two ultimates like that, he got maybe one kill. It's really not enough mileage for two ultimates, Ben. Again, Bacon Jack looking to get the damage done, looking to do the mileage for his team. Going to throw out the uh, Nano Boost on him as well, in fact. But he's kind of struggling to find the targets. No talk. Really struggling to see which direction, though, he should be blocking. Oh, that's, that. that's a, a good couple of picks. Quick headshots there to secure another one to can. And that's going to tip the balance in this one. Known as the only one alive. And uh, yeah, there we go. Right, right at the end there. Now, Flash Wolves is just maintaining control now. 85% means you're in a decent position, especially with the Nano Blade. Uh, sorry, well, not the Nano Blade, but the Dragon Blade coming up with Zonda, Machi. 
they will commit every single ult back in this fight. Now, a key player, Kimi Ooh, Bacon he has Jack. to stay alive. They have to get oh, this res, and it's going to come out soon. That's big, yeah. They have to not use too many ultimates before the res, though. It's going to come out any second now, surely. And they've already committed yep, three of their ultimates. This is Jongi just opening up with his. He is going to get Kiyomi off the edge. That's a useful one to start it off. And good sound barrier out of Realman to keep it alive. They're getting the rest out. They need to be careful of Nones, but he can't do enough as his own on his own. Sorry, getting blocked out there by K Momo. And that's going to be a really nice secure out by Flash Wolves. They did use a few mini resources at the top of that before the res, but it paid off. It wasn't too risky. They still had the skill to close out the rest of the kills after the fact. And that is 2-1 to Flash Wolves. The good thing for Flash Wolves is that they didn't have to commit too much to get the res out. They got the early picks, not through ultimates, but just through pure aim. They got it well, through Well, Bacon Jacks went completely wide, so... Yeah, I mean, they, they, they sort of just got the picks early, forced to res without using any ultimates of their own. Cool, you res four members. Well, now we get to use our ultimates finally. Here's a Primal Rage, completely knocks out your Mercy, no one to fly well, to. And no one is looking for a target, looking for a decent um, area to rock a barrage as well. Doesn't find it, has to use it because he understands he has the ultimate. This is basically the only shot they have left for controlling the point. Kind of uses it straight into a diva. Not very effective. Ends up getting himself killed. And Machi just have no resources left to play with. Well, okay, sure. I, I actually have to kind of disagree with you on a bit of a point there. Um, and maybe we can touch on this a little bit later. Flash Wolves actually did commit two ultimates. Like, after the res, they were technically at a disadvantage. But what they had was a big positional advantage. I think I'll touch on it after this matchup uh, is kind of wrapped up on Lee Jung, though. Because we are now back on Night Market with Flash Wolves match point. This is the one that Flash Wolves have already lost though, but they oh. got the early picks this time because Bacon Jack, he wasn't the one getting the early picks on Nine Marker last time, but uh, one kill will definitely swing things in their yeah, favor. Looking a little bit more solid just with this 2-2-2 two, two, two here. Flash Wolves not quite wanting to go the triple DPS route. It's is, uh, working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Can't just get a good pick back. That's uh, two teams. Be Flash Wolves with the positional advantage to get on this point, even if Nones gets something crazy here. In fact, he needs to be careful to not go too deep. He's kind of isolated. Oh, wow, how wow he goes that? deeper and he actually gets to pay off as well. Just barely had enough fire support from Kiyomi, and out of nowhere, Machi just kind of swing back. And as it turns out, Nones was doing the exact right thing. Flash Wolves really needed to clean that kill up on the Nones. If they had been able to kill the Genji, then maybe they swap onto Kiyomi, then maybe they swap onto No Talk or somebody else, but. They sort of just fell over, they committed a lot to try and get no nears down, didn't manage to secure the kill. And then no nears and Kiyomi as a combo completely wiped out Flash Wolves. Bacon Jack needs to be careful to not just get into a gentleman's duel with Kant. He is much better off trying to get Miles around the rest of the team. Zonda just barely getting topped off by a uh, very quick grenade there. No talk. There's a very early ultimate out of him, but Jongi not really finding much with the nano burst as Bacon Jack goes down. And Jongi himself not finding anything. Kant, good mileage there. And a uh, bit of an overdive by Flash Wolves not finding the targets they sought. And uh, Machi well held. Four ultimates for two, though. I think Flash Wolves will be happy Pretty to take happy the indeed. trade. So anyway, Flash Wolves coming back up with coming about three ultimates here, but the most important they have the DPS ones. Much you don't. They use every single DPS ultimate, and there's no transcendence to save themselves against on this Dragon Blade either. He will absolutely use it, and he gets a kill early. That's huge. I'm going to open up with the Dragon Blade onto a very isolated Kiyomi now looking to seek out the rest. And that's the thing with these flankers. Sure, they can kind of scatter off to the sides, but one of them dies. The rest get no fire support, and it becomes another easy cleanup. Again, holding on to their ultimates, Flash Wolves, but how many times are they going to hold on to their ultimates and still lose they the fight? They need to win this. They have yeah. to commit. Or they, they need Ooh. to be using ultimates This may be a bit of an overcommit, actually, out of rest here. I mean, it was really only Bacon Jack on the point, and now he's going to try and just do the mileage himself. He's bought the team enough time to get on the point, and maybe this is the moment they do commit the ultimates because they're well set up. Machi didn't really respect the flank, didn't really respect how quick some of those respawns would come in. Had a very awkwardly timed sound barrier, and now they're getting turned around upon. It's a big open out of Nones, but no, he's he already down. Yeah, he was already down a few too many members, so they kind of gave that one over to Flash Wolves. Nones needed to be a little bit more composed there and understand there was no way for him to actually bring back the fighter. Again, unforced error. He felt like, I think in his mind, he felt like if I Dragon Blade here, I might be able to turn things around, but against four members of Flash Wolves currently capping on the point, I just don't think that was going to be the case. That and the fact that Machu was so far ahead in cap anyway, just like last time on Night Market, they can afford to give up fights here, they can afford to recharge ultimates, find an advantage and re-engage. Be careful to re-engage this one safely. Good back off by Jongi before he goes too deep onto no talk, but that was an ultimate committed out of Flash Rolls. Still looking for the pick, neither team finding it just yet. There's the one. And there's the other one. That's two for one. I guess Flash Wolves are happy enough with that, but they did lose that Primal Rage. 
They're gonna have to open up now, Machi, with that uh, attack visor, not quite getting much for it. Only a couple of kills and losing. This duel is well. important. Yeah, it is very important. Known as, oh, he just comes out on top, but actually, Flash Wolves are kind of the ones ahead, and Machi's respawns are coming in so trickled. They're not grouped up, and Flash Wolves are starting to kind of run over them. They are gonna back off now. They do give Machi a bit of room to breathe. And the reason that duel is important is whatever, whichever Genji actually wins that duel has the opportunity to snowball for the rest of their team. Here comes the sound barrier now for Machi. They want to hold on early. to this one. But this has been a very, very long fight now. That is again very early. And now Realman's one getting a lot more mileage as Kiyomi does not have the extra health now to keep himself alive. Known as oh, nothing a, with the Dragon Blade. That is so unfortunate. Another Genji duel falling the way of Flash Wolves, who are again well set up here. They did lose the point over. They need but they a are cap ahead though, in this point. Yeah, they're ahead in the fight and they should be able to cap in a moment. But actually, Machi might just be able to stretch this to 99%. That's really the best they can get out of a bad situation. That's an incredibly good result, actually, to be able to stretch it all the way to 99, forcing Flash Wolves onto the back foot here. They get the recap. Not the Machi are still somewhat ahead. They just have to get a good opening here. They got a couple of ultimates they can sort of rely on. Um, but any opening they get should fall in the way of Machi, and that might just be enough to secure them the game. They need to be very smart with how they commit the ultimates, but here's going to be a very early yeah, nano boost. I'll take that trade. Out, yeah, out onto the Winstons. Yeah, you would take that trade indeed. But the trade's back, and what's important as Flash Wolves now absolutely swing back in the few ultimates they have here. Only DCR one left with this. He's going to have to use it on the point just to buy time, but I think Flash if Wolves he goes got down, yeah, Flash Wolves, they've almost certainly got the secured, unless they close out so slowly that Matt should get like a full on regroup, but it's not going to happen. The pick on DCR1 means now Machi are going to be trickling onto this point, looking for their last ditch effort, but it's not going to happen as the overtime runs on out, and Flash Wolves will secure 3-1. to one. Well, Machi actually got the opening pick there, which was so good, onto Bacon Jack as well, but then they just immediately dropped three members, which is um, really sad for them. I mean, that, that would have been and kind of should have been the opening that they needed to get back onto the cap. Because the caps are so close, realistically at that point in the game, whichever team had the control was kind of dictating the momentum of the game, which was why the initiative had to be on Machi's side. They had to have the they had to have the opening going to the fight. They had to be the ones initiating the fight, getting the initial pick. Uh, without it, and even with it, they they just kind of got out traded. Yeah, I feel like that was quite. An interesting match. I, I just suppose it's in, really in, back and forth. To yeah, in light of what we were kind of saying about these two teams, I mean, both from the perspective of Machi and of Flash Wolves, I mean, Machi are the ones who have something to prove here, and Flash Wolves want to prove even more than they already have, right? So, given that that came as close as it did, I'm not sure quite what that says about these two teams just yet, because my personal feeling about what we just saw, to be honest, is the two teams were kind of matching each other. Um, and Machi would either lose because they would drop the ball on the macro, and half the time they lost a fight would be because of that, and then the other half, it would be because they dropped the ball in terms of just individual gameplay, one way or another, whether it was um, oddly timed ultimates, and I mean, most of the time, ultimates are called out by the teams, those sound barriers would have been team calls, but things like known as throwing out a Dragon Blade last minute on the point, that's often a clutch decision by the player, and, uh, I mean, if it was a call by the team, then that is equally a mistake, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not just, you know, trying to blame Nones. It is a mistake that is made. And that was the other half um, when, they were, when they were kind of losing was just getting outpicked and outtraded and sometimes committing things that were done at the wrong time. And then, like I said, the other half was just a bit of general macro, not quite leveraging what they had. But the interesting thing with that is when they weren't making those mistakes, they were winning. So it kind of makes you wonder would a more consistent Machi had have actually won that? I'll tell you what really made a lot of difference between uh, between the two teams and, and the way the fights went is there were a decent number of fights that were decided by whichever ulting DPS hero killed another ulting DPS yeah. hero. How many and times was it Zonda versus many, Nones two to, Dragon To be out? honest, but they both traded each other quite often. Nones has killed Zonda in the middle of a Dragon Blade. Yeah. Particularly at the start, it was devastating. When that happened, that completely swung the fight in Machi's favor and vice versa as well when Zonda did it to Nones. Mm. Now, a big part of why it's important for, in terms of those trades, even when there's no ultimates involved, even when it was just Nones and Zonda having a bit of a shuriken flinging fist uh, on the side of the map on, on their own, it's just straight up 1v1. The winner of that 1v1 immediately gets the reset on the dash to start with, mm. but then starts to snowball for the DPS damage output in the favor of their team straight away and and that's a big deal because 
uh, you've now eliminated the one of the primary DPS on the other team, and you have the sort of momentum going forward with an extra DPS on your side. There's a lot sort of working for you there. Those duel, those individual duels on the sides have been deciding quite a bit of the game, I think. And the interesting thing about those, to kind of j piggyback on that, if you will, is I feel like flash rules um, sometimes just rely on on outskilling their opponents. We see it happen often enough with Bacon Jack that it feels fair to rely on it, but that also shouldn't be the only thing you rely on, right? Because the moment you come up against someone who is essentially equally skilled, that's a coin flip. I mean, it's as good as a yeah. coin flip, right? I'm not a fan and, of 1v1s. I think and we, I've said it a lot. I, exactly. And I, There's good yeah, reasons for that. I mean, like you said, we even saw there. I saw it, you saw it, everyone saw it. Half the time, no has got it. Half the time, Zonda got it. That's not good enough. Now, it does say a lot about flash rules that even when... Um, even though you could call that a 50-50, and I feel like if we watch that back, it would probably be roughly half the time one would die and half the time the other. Despite that, they were still winning, right? They, they won pretty solidly They when they were ahead. And I mean, when you win 3-1, even if when it's 99% and all that jazz, like you are still the team that won. That's not just, you know, enough coin flips in your favor. Let's not say that this came down to RNG. It's not like that at all. It is still just them being a little bit better than Matchy, but like I said a moment ago, I can't help but feel like a more consistent matchy, and maybe it's actually matchy who needs to not seek those 1v1s. A more consistent matchy, I feel, could have absolutely taken that. I mean, there were moments where uh, uh, there was one duel at some point between Nones and Zonda where uh, DCR1 kind of stepped in as the Winston result to add the extra damage. That's exactly what you need to be able to swing these into your favor. You need to turn 1v1s into a 2v1 or a 3v1 or something mm. of that like, because um, it's it's more one, about getting the pick than yeah, about yeah, winning I mean, the duel. The the actual 1v1 itself is it kind of is a coin flip that can just kind mm. of go 50-50 depending on the skill of the player as well. But mm. realistically, turn into a 2v1, suddenly now you get the momentum behind your back. That's when you can start to really make some plays. Um, but I think you're right about one thing. Bacon, they, it does look like when Bacon Jack isn't making the plays on the Tracer, Flash Rules kind of fall back a little bit. and They're mm. not really... Um, they're not really finding their footing there. At the same time, there were moments such as when Jong-E died right at the start of a fight. Flash Rules decide to commit anyway. I just that kind of that kind of play, I don't really agree and kind of I don't really understand either. They went for the five v six and they weren't ahead in ultimates. They weren't really they had no real advantage, but they decided to take the five v six anyway, and rightly so. They lost the fight. Yeah, and and you almost wonder if maybe the decision they're making, which would be the wrong decision. You almost wonder if the decision they're making is, well, it may be 5v6, but Bacon Jack will carry anyway. And I'm not saying that that's what's happening, but you worry that that's the kind of thing, because there is certainly a reason they're still going for that. And like I said, Bacon Jack goes off consistently enough that you can start not relying on it, but taking it into account when making your team decisions. And if it's being taken into account too much, if it's being given too much weight, then you can start taking unfavorable fights. Now, Sometimes you would get away with it against, you know, some of the lower down teams in a tournament, but over time that's going to stop being the I, case when they figure you out. I want to, um, I want to move a little bit forward though, because we'll no doubt get plenty more time to dive deep into this. Because next map is, of course, going to be King's Row. This one being Flashwell's pick, and we have seen them absolutely destroy teams on King's Row, notably, in fact, matching. I think King's Row has definitely been one of Flashwell's uh, quite favourable maps for Machi though. Something I noticed that really pushed them forward is you notice on Control Center they ran two DPS, or well, they ran a 2 2 2. And then immediately when they went onto Night Market, they ran a triple DPS. Now that's when Machi really stepped up their game. I wonder if they will continue that or not. Um, Flash Rules seem to be kind of comfortable in whatever situation mm -hmm. they, they're running, sort of everything now. But Machi, I noticed a really distinct difference between them mm. running the 2-2-2 and the triple DPS. And I do feel like they perform better with the triple DPS. Now, I don't know well, if that's based not on their that. performance or because Flash Wolves either A, weren't expecting it or responded poorly to it. Maybe a combination. Potentially. But, I mean, even that aside, I honestly feel like actually Matchy's triple DPS was better than Flash Wolves' triple DPS. Now, again, except it could when just, the Ferret came out. Except yeah. no news is Ferret, really feel yeah, that. Except for that. But in any case, yeah, we'll see if they actually do choose to pull it out. Probably more likely to see it on the offense. Time, actually. Yeah, which was actually something we saw them pull out on uh, Legion Tower on Control Center as well. So it's going to be showing a bit of flexibility, if nothing else. The question is, uh, is it reliable enough? So they're, they're really going for K-Momo onto the Soldier. Now, usually in this situation, Bacon Jack would be playing the Soldier and feel like K-Momo. 
would actually be on the Diva. Yeah. They are trying out a couple of new things here, which is interesting. I want to see how far they can get with this lineup. Yeah, this is actually a very recent change. You're completely right. Seems uh, like not necessarily a roll swap, but a bit of uh, change. Oh, no one saw Kant there. Oh, no one saw Kant, but Kant saw K-Momo. That plus the kick onto Realment means that Flash Rolls do just need to back off and not lose too many members on the way. Zonda needs to maybe back off a little bit quicker than he is here. He's at uh, at risk of getting routed. Well, luckily for him, the hook does go wide. He should be able to retreat safely as Machi get back to the point. The other thing, interesting thing to note is Zonda is also not playing the Soldier. Obviously, Kamamo is playing it, but you're not putting the Soldier on either of your DPS plays, your standard DPS plays, and particularly not on your Superstar hit scans either. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see if they're going to get enough mileage out of this, but if they kill DCR1, Ooh. this is going to open well, up the uh, fight in their favor big way. There you have it. We see that so often with DCR1, and now they're going to open it up on the rest of them. No talk. He kind of has to go into full retreat here. Zonda well set up on the point. That is one dead, Lucio. That was almost brutal. Like They just, they just threw everything right at the ground, right where he was. Uh, but that is a nice and handy point cap for Flash Wolf. It's a clean point cap as well, because they didn't have to really... They committed a nano boost, which is a really clean ult to commit because it's not an ultimate that puts you behind an ult economy. In fact, it raises your ult economy because it charges your, your whoever you're nano boosting, it charges your ult up. So for Flash Wolves, all they had to do was get past um, DCL1 Whoa. and they secured it off that. Quick hook is really clean. One yeah. kill is all they needed. Quick hook is really going to stop Flash Wolves from uh, getting too much. He's looking for the grab. This is well positioned. If he can get a good one, yeah, he's going to catch a few. Instant Gets put to sleep, though. but the rest of the team can still follow up and follow up. They will do opening up nicely there. Jongi caught in the earth shatter. That's kind of all they had though. Unfortunately, that tranquility not in time to save it. Is singly getting picked off as well by No Talk, and they're a little bit scattered here. Flash Wolves. They're this trying to keep this one going, Wolves. but DCR1 surviving that one means that they couldn't actually close out anything. Nona is going to commit attack by Zara. I don't know if that was necessary, but it is a hold for Machi. Flash Wolves is... That was a really bad spot for them. I think they need to... Flash Wolves have this sort of thing where they don't like to give up fights really easily. They need to be able to identify, look, we're not actually going to win this now. A, let's stop committing ultimates, but B, let's actually try and back out of here. They like to continue and commit to these fights, even if they're losing position. And if you do that, you're feeding ults to Machi. Again, maybe over-relying on an ability to just, you know, get frags, if nothing else. But right now, not quite working. And, uh, oh, that's... Can't, uh, can't should be can't a free pick. Very gotta kill that. Deep, yeah. Bit too deep. I mean, no what's he gonna do? Pick well. Bacon Jack? Yeah, no is up there as well. But this is a nice Earth Shatter to try and uh, catch a few out here. Open up from K Momo here as he's got the tack visor on. He's just trying to keep the bullets pumping for now as they're making some space for themselves. No talk out of the mech. Can is going to be able to respawn and come back to this team any second now. That oh, is a that big hit. earth shatter. That is nasty, nasty if you're a Flash Wolves fan. Absolutely destroyed their DCR1. Nice placement. Flash Wolves lying on the floor is pretty much exactly how I feel about the performance oh, so far. In and Kings again Road. now. Yeah, lying on the floor again. Bacon Jack Sleeping on the happened. job. <laughs> the really good thing about all of this is Restia picking up these kills on the sides. Now the Earth Shadow coming down. You see Restia immediately dive onto, uh, I believe it was K-Momo on the back there. A couple of quick headshots from the Lucio. And because he's picking up these kills, he's going to be able to build these um, sound barriers up quite Ooh, quickly. Big aggressive charge, but uh, Kant is just still positioning himself back here. I mean, <coughs> he may even go down now. He probably will go down now, but he already got the pick on the DPS. That's all that really matters here. And he's still not Another dead. Pick. He's going to get Zonda as well. This is gross. I mean, every time he does this, Flash Rules basically just <coughs> lose a minute. Flash Rules need to be able to predict this now. They have to know Kant's going to be hiding somewhere. We have to yeah, understand. Shame on me if you fool me twice. There's going to be a flank. It, 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 it's been successful because Kant's going to achieve one of two things. He's either going to pull Flash Wolves a single member to try and chase him, or he's going to get undetected and he won't get a kill. The best result for Flash Wolves is they have to move as a team to try and flush him out. But even if they do that, Machi by themselves a lot of time. If Flash Wolves, they lose some. That's a great uh, search. And they're all behind him. They're opening up now with this Nanovisor combo, but actually there's not many members to kill here. Flash oh, Wolves are just catching the rest of Machi because they kind of split themselves up to get this positioning. Maybe trying to be a little bit too clever, in fact, as K-Momo cleaning up quite nicely. And Flash Wolves at last hit the payload underway. Noni's had a little bit of a K4 moment there where it was like, um, 
please come back into my tech visor range. I'm <laughs> having a bad time yeah, here. Yeah, I, I don't even feel like that was actually Flash Wolves finally crashing in this defense. I feel like actually Matchy split themselves up. They kind of opened they themselves. They did. And, and Flash Wolves took the six before. They're like, okay, cool. You're going to commit two players behind it us It was all three the time? even. They sent Kiyomi as well. Did they? Yeah. Okay, well, a 6v3 is even better. That's how they were able to get the nano boost on Nones as well. Now going to open up with a whole hog that's not really going to get much. It's just going to get distance. And there's still plenty this of time for Flash Wolves to win a fight. Yeah, I mean, it is Pushing. what they need, but when the payload is like right here, Flash Wolves can just bide their time. Looking to commit again now. Jongi, yeah, that failed completely. Uh, trying to get a little bit more this time around. No, no one's really getting anything with these Earth Shadows aside from the one earlier from DCR1. And now the fight well opened out. Restia, the sound barrier already gone. Kant a little bit low, getting finally picked off. Realman doesn't have his own, and they are about to lose Zonda if they're not careful. If he gets his in time, they're fine. Zonda topped off in the nick of time. And that's going to give Flash Wolves the mileage to close this one out. That is a great self destruct to buy a few seconds. Does actually buy Jongi as well, but Flash Wolves should be able to come back on this one. No, they can't even follow up their own Graviton. That was too well timed out of. Of, uh, no talk there with that self destruct. Bacon Jack now out of the mech. Nowhere to run, fight. nowhere to hide. Last fight indeed. Flash Wolves, they're really on the road. Bacon Jack will die here. That's only going to have five members up for Flash Wolves. 25 seconds left to go. They got to go. Flash Wolves have to run into the cap, and the card is so far away as well. Machi can just play aggressive, and Machi move up their positioning, maybe leave a single member behind. They are going to clean up Flash Wolves. You shouldn't be letting Flash Wolves regroup here. They'd have to get a huge set of ultimates here. First, they've got to the get on the payload. Well. Okay, oh, they can do a tactical uh, nano visor combo. In fact, they're going to try to open out with that one. But they've got to get onto the payload. That's what really counts. Only one second left. They're near it. Yes, they're just barely on it. Realman able to get there. He's actually in behind the team, but he's already lost Jongi and Kimomo. They've only traded back onto one. They might be able to get no talk here. No one has not enough mileage out of his tag visor. They're trying to strike back. Bacon Jack and Zonda can maybe do this here, but Zonda with that anti-heal on from the biotic grenade is really struggling. No talk. He's still getting a lot of mileage despite not being in the mech as DCR1 puts a hammer into Zarya's He's got head. another Earth Shatter already. Has wow. another Earth Shatter. Yeah, Bacon Jack throwing out the ultimate. I mean, it's really just going to buy seconds if anything, really. Jongi now on the point. It's just trickling on. No one from Flash Wolves is ever going to get anything good enough to really secure this one. Not a great Earth Shatter out of DCR1, though, but honestly, they had the other kills, and that was a really great hold out of Machi. I'm really unsure if Machi have just really stepped up or if Flash Wolves have kind, of, down. Let, kind of let things go a little bit because... There was one player I really liked from Flash Wolves, but everything else on their attack kind of fell flat for me. So the one player I thought they did quite well was the other option for the, the players sort of flanking them in that, um, around that first sort of bend was Flash Wolves took an aggressive fight around the side of the bookshop, said, you got like three, maybe four members here. We'll take the 6v3 or the 6v4. Your other man members hanging behind, known as you can take Visor if you want, but you're not going to find anybody with that. Yeah, That's exactly I feel like what happened. Very smart moves by Flash was to get the car moving, but straight after that, again, over committing to fights. Well, a, big, a big weakness I'm starting to point out here is they commit to fights even when they're losing, even when realistically there's no way for them to, to turn the fights around. Mm. They're not backing up. They're not trying to retreat with any members alive. They're just, it's, it's like, they understand it's a one-way trip or something like that. They've decided it's a one-way trip, and they are guaranteed to feed alts into marching. Yeah, in for a penny, in for a pound. And uh, yeah, I kind of agree with you there as well. I don't know I can even credit them with that one good fight win. I feel like actually it was Machi just kind of mis-executing. And even then, had Machi been in position, you know, a second or two earlier, there probably would have actually been a team wipe with that nano visor in that undetected position. And I'll tell you what, that uh, whole hog um, as well from Machi was timed really well. Because As it they, happens, buying time was all they, they needed. Well, it is, because I'll tell you something interesting about that car position. I, I may have, people may have heard me say this before, but still holds true. That car position right near the cap is both the best place for it to be as an attacker because it's so close, and also equally the worst. Now, the worst being when if someone actually, dies, huge walk. Not only that, but when, when it goes to overtime, which it ended up being, where we had about 35 seconds left, because the car's so far away, to actually contest that, you have to run through all of these defenders to even touch the cart. Mm. So it's you a get really poor position, and, and it was. We were going to overtime, so I mean, Machi, uh, they bought their time really well. They played this yeah. sort of time game I mean, very correctly there. The last time these two teams met on this, actually, Flash Wolves capped with about four or five minutes in the bank. Mm. So Machi, they don't even have to completely cap here. They've kind of uh, got the ball in their end of the court, as it were. But Flash Wolves are not a team to be taken lightly. So the good sort of uh, flanking maneuver from Machi, just making sure they clean up that 
bell tower, big band area, making oh, sure no I like one's hiding this. there. This is a big collapse. That's huge. They drew Flash Wolves out as Flash Wolves was trying to cut off Matchy's move, but that's just left Flash Wolves completely exposed. But Matchy, they're the ones losing the members here. Flash Wolves, they're able to find the picks. This is just them purely out fragging, and it's working at Charm. Now, Kant and Nones are completely isolated. Even throwing down the ultimate, that can't even get all the way through a D.Va, even if you get it stuck. Bacon, Bacon Jack brings it back for them again. We're talking about how Bacon Jack has been a play for Flash Wolves that when he goes off, he's really pulling his team with him. And, um, you gotta, like you gotta sort of think, was that a bait from Flash Wolves or did they just outskill Machi? Because I feel like Machi had the much better position, they had the better yeah. gauge angle, it certainly they should have won. certainly didn't look intentional, and a Graviton has already closed out two kills before the sound barrier was even committed, so already too little too late, and again, a full route. I mean, hey, two ultimates, you are going to be happy with that mileage, given that they are about to have four coming up, and matches still have none. Flash yeah, are getting, Flash are actually going to be in a great position to do a full hold on, on, on Cafe here. Yep. Uh, a lot of ultimates coming online here. Machi, they've been sort of blowing their ultimates into these losing fights. Kind of similar to what Flash Wolves were doing, like in a sort of yes or no kind of way, but uh, Machi, they're, they're unlikely to win this next fight. In fact, here come the ultimates here. Transcendence being committed yeah, means Machi want to go for it, and a Dragon Blade as well. Known as in Zonda again, the gentleman's due deal, but uh, both actually get away with that one. But it just means now they get any mileage out of their ults. DCR one diving, known as uh, sorry Zonda secures it. Now they actually get K Momo. They're this doing well. right enough in this fight despite the early ultimate commitment because Flash Wolves didn't really find anything at all with any of theirs. And now Machi are getting the kills to kind of back this one up, and that was just really good absorption of the ultimates out of Machi. They will be able to cap the point and get the card underway. They're still in for a chance. Good, uh, good cleanup by DCR1 as well. Question uh, is, by the way, to, question is, yep. did Flash Wolves squander their lead? Because you're right, they could have definitely hold there. Or did Matthew just play very well? I want to hear your thoughts. <sighs> this has been the question of the night, though. Like, what is it? Is it one team doing well? Is it the other team doing poorly? I want to be able to say Kiyomi's Transcendence got a lot of mileage there. Flash Wolves committing else directly in the Transcendence. I mean, that's always going to be a really good trade here. And the forward positioning goes to some Pulse Bomb as well. So oh, I love it. What much you're able to do here is completely deny any ability for Flash Wolves to set up. Yeah. They don't even have to push really that far. They don't have to cap at all. And this is what Flash Wolves couldn't do to Machi last time around. Machi didn't give them the opportunity. Flash Wolves are all going to take a dive because Machi was so deep. It was better for Flash Wolves to all wipe so that Machi had to go back to the cart. That is phenomenal. See, but this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of discipline play that I wish I saw from Flash Wolves on their attack. This is Flash Wolves understanding, look, we actually have to leave this fight now. Don't feed any more ult. We just have to respawn together. They didn't do that at all on attack. They just decided to commit anyway. Something is changing, but it might be a little bit too late. Look at the car positioning. We're almost oh, there now. Oh, yeah. This ought to be the big commit. The nano boost is already out, but they're, again, it's not finding much. Shatter. That's a decent kind of earth shatter, but it's getting absorbed here by the sound barrier. All they've got so far is Cannon DCR1, but Machi aren't actually getting picks back. They should be okay to back off here at the very least and live to fight another day. Unfortunately, losing no talks Mac. Actually, they're not even able to retreat. They're all just getting picked off as they pull back, but they still have plenty of time to cap here. I think Machi didn't really have the tools to cap that one out fully. All they had was a self-destruct, and that's never realistically going to be enough to win. Uh, to win a fight out, outright. Oh, I think no they talk. needed a little bit more. They needed to wait for Nones to get the Dragon Blade up. Maybe something else as well. They do have a couple of those ults available now, but because they lost that previous fight, Flash Wolves are able to charge their ults back up. Now you got Bacon Jack with the self destruction of its own. Realman has a sound barrier as well. This has sudden, suddenly become a defense that Flash Wolves can actually hold out. They can if they use their ultimates, right? Because. Matchy well, they do. should, because Machi don't have a well, transcendence this time for but, Flash Wolves to blow all the ults into. But Machi do have the right ultimates to get picks, and if they get those out, okay, well, they're not quite going to get them yet. Not really enough out of that first one there, the Pulse Bomb. And now Zonda should have a pretty sweet position to open this one out. Known is trying to open out though. Already getting Jongi and has an ultimate if he wants to commit it, but he's gonna get picked off instead. Good discipline actually holding on to it. They're just gonna back off, take this one on the chin, and uh, live to fight another day, though they only have really one day left. Zonda did a full lap of that block there as well, just sort of looking for a way out. He's got a key Known is still as a dragon blade. They're he dragging does. this one out actually. He's so far away. Matchy, they're still kind of going on this one as DCR1 commits. It's like they've kind of got it in their sights, so they're just going to go ahead and go for it, but I don't uh, know if they could really either. get the mileage out of it. Picking Realmint as well, but again, they're continuing to lose members. Undisciplined play by DCR1, and he may have actually just blown them their chance. This is the thing for Matchy. The, the repeating mistakes Flash Wolves did on their attack as well. Now they're committing it to fights and with ults as well, which is a bit of a cardinal sin. 
where you're not going to win the fight and you blew ults, but you just put yourself further and further behind. 50 seconds left to go, realistically, if they use ults here, Machi are not going to get a second fight, so they have to be very careful if they actually want to take this engagement, but I think time's running out, and they're not going to have a choice. This yeah, will be the fight just where they got to go. Picking Sinkler is huge, though. Can find against the mileage of the Pulse Bomb. Now he's in behind them, so they can't even get much follow-up on anything else they so throw good start, out. Really good that start. was not a good enough Earth Shatter, and known as absolutely cleaning the floor with the Dragon Blade is going to be better than a good start. It's going to be all the way to a good finish. Zonda is really the only one left to contest. It's up on the high ground, but now known as up in his space. Should stop anything coming out of him. They're all set up on the cart. Zonda Zonda, he's already dead. He can't even drop off the high ground and they are going to push it through to the end. Well played there by Machi, if a little dicey. But props to them after making quite a big mistake to turn it right back around in the next fight in cap. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Flash Rules will feel a bit shocked by that one. They got to feel a little bit uneasy as well. I didn't expect, I don't think you expected, and definitely Flash Rules did not expect the loser the way they did. However, it is kind of deserved. It is deserved in the fact that I, I feel like Flash Rules definitely made a lot of aggressive mistakes. So they played confidently as a team. That kind of came back to bite them because, again, they didn't understand which fights they had to sort of back off on. Every single fight felt like a must win for them. And that's not the right way to play because when you play like that, you're committing to every, you're committing members to every single fight. And even the fights that you, you're very likely to lose, you end up giving away those ult charges to the enemy team. Machi were constantly put in positions where oh, they want to fight that uh, they shouldn't have won as hard, but because they did, they got the extra ult charge, that kind of snowballed them further on the defense, got their ult charges up quicker, gave them an extra ult on, a, on the next defense that they shouldn't have had. It just sort of keeps on going. It just, you know, it just yeah. becomes a sort of, uh, um, I don't even know what to say it's about not, it, but... It's not quite a snowball, but it is kind of a knock-on, you know, and, and it just makes it, it makes it harder and harder to kind of overcome that, you know, it's, it's like, it's like if you've ever dropped something and when you go to pick it up, you nudge it with your foot, right? You can still pick it up, but you've got to take an extra step. Exactly. And then if you nudge it with your foot again, you've got to keep going. And like, if you're Flash Wolves, you nudge it all it's the way Flash across Wolves the ring like and then you don't get it in your hands. one step forward and then two steps backwards. In, it's in really a way, in a way what yeah. it is. I mean, uh, we, we kind of mentioned uh, partway through that it's hard to say if this is um, Machi playing well or Flash Rolls maybe dropping the ball a bit. I'm going to go ahead and say it's a bit of both. I, I, I'll be honest, Machi is still, still making mistakes and he did touch on something in there as well. Um, Machi kind of made a similar mistake to what Flash Rolls had been making. They got excited. They yeah. were like, oh, we're so close to capping. Let's just go yeah, for it. Yeah, sure. But hear me out, right? It is a mistake that has previously been much more endemic of Machi, right? So Flash Rules yeah. making that same mistake is actually bad. And given that that's the only time we really saw Machi really make that mistake in a significant way, is quite good for Machi because they used to make that mistake a lot more often. So I can tell you the difference as well. Having like, really they important. have actually cleaned up the play. There's still more mileage to go. There's still more distance to go. But they have cleaned up the play a lot. And like we said as well, Flash Rules are maybe not having a shaky night. I don't want to quite put it to that, but. They aren't playing as cleanly as they should, and it does seem, uh, like you said, that now, they're overcommitting a lot of now the Now, Flash Wolves had that one really clean fight at the start. The first take, um, the first point attack onto King's Row, where they identified the weakness in the team. They caught out uh, DCR1, who had a cracked shield. They said, look, if we just take down this tank, the rest of their defense will fall apart. And sure thing they did. Jongi on the front yep. line, fresh shield. No way for Machi to get back into that one. Now, here's the difference between the mistakes that the two teams made. They made similar, similar mistakes to the fact that they overcommitted to fights that they should have backed off on or should have been able to save members on a not fit ult. Now, for, for, for Machi, I'll start with them. Theirs has a sort of foundation of, we're really close to winning, this is quite exciting. Let's just try and close it out when they should have been a bit more disciplined and took you know the safer winning route and, and less risks overall. Now, for Flash Wolves, it's coming from a different foundation. It's coming from a base of, why aren't we winning? We're better than these guys. Mm. We should be winning. Hey, just get in there. And, and even though we have less members and we're not mm. likely to win, we should be winning because we're yeah. better. So come we on, come on, guys. Anyway. Pull it together. Just win. And it's like, it's like hey. They've been following too hey, much Korean advice. Jong just win the game. Jongi just died, but we can still beat them 5v6 because we're better and we should just win. Why are we not winning? Mm. And that's, that's that kind of... I don't want to put <clears throat> words in their mouths and I don't want to say that they're playing overconfident, but they're playing with a level of confidence where they expect that their 
this much better than Machi. I don't. This is kind of arbitrary, but whatever. You kind of get the point. And because they're playing like mm. that, they're not really respecting the result that Machi sort of put forward, mm. and they need to start doing that. Yeah, they're not respecting what's actually <coughs> happening. And also to kind of speak to this, I feel like one of the other big differences between the two teams right this minute is um, Flash Rules are committing to those fights when they lose someone at the start, and the big mistake Machi are making is they'll be down for maybe even five members and then someone commits an ultimate. Now, both are big, big issues, but right now, Flash Rules 1 is costing them more. This is now at least going to a game four, but if we do end up in that situation where we go all the way to the game five, that is actually when that home and away can really kick in. And that's going to be Flash Wolves in unfamiliar, unfamiliar territory, sorry, for this matchup. I'm, I'm and we are going to see... Ooh. Okay, well, I'll, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, I'll, just, I'll just say it really quick before we go there. If we go to a map five, I think much you're going to take it. Because I, Flash, I actually, Flash yeah. Wolves are not going to be... They're going to get to map five and they're not going to know what's happening to them. Yeah. And, and they will lose. I mean... Right now, on paper, I would agree. And with that, we are going to take a brief break before we do hit on up that map three. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You've had just enough time to make two batches of two-minute noodles. So have one in the first game and then one in the fourth game. The third game and fourth game. I was going to do first, second, then I was like, actually, it's third, fourth. But we're back! That's what matters! And we're going to be having map three between... Flash Wolves and Matchy Esports. So, yeah, already a bit of an interesting one because we are at least going to a match four. I was, got, four, I was gonna say, if you got an extra packet, you might need to pull that out for a potential oh, yeah. match five. Well, I, I hopefully, think we could get there. I think. Yeah, hopefully we'll the, get another, like if we have another quick break between four and five, then you've got plenty of time to make that third bowl of Because moves. I expect Flash Wolves to be favored on Assault, like heavily favored. Flash Wolves, fun fact, are undefeated on Assault so far. 0-7, or 7-0, oh, that's 0-7-0. Oh, 7 and 0 including against blank so mm. this is their best were... game mode statistically i don't know if i don't know if that's going to continue based on what we've seen on king's row but uh, statistically flash was a favored now i'm sort of thinking Machi might be able to come back on map four which will then give us a map five the one thing that match do have going for them here though is it is their pick now given the flash rules i would say uh, like you uh, they're kind of favored honestly on assault no you know, matter they, what pick you yeah, take. Yeah, no matter They've what it is. They've won on yeah. all three maps. So. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, which one do you even go for? But if nothing else, you get to pick side. And yeah. the argument that's kind of bouncing around right now is the person who attacks second is a little bit more favored because of how the percentage works. Mm. There is a very valid counter argument to that as well. So I don't want to go too deep into that, but... That's at least the line of thinking that a lot of uh, a lot of analysts are taking right now. For the time being, I don't doubt that this is going to change when teams figure things out a little bit more. I... But before you jump in there, okay. just quick, it's going to be Volskaya. I wanted to jump in there. I was going to jump. You were going to jump in. Yeah, sorry, I but I, I, I restrained you. Don't do it. I was going to travel straight to Volskaya, but uh, <laughs> just jump in. Just jump in. You. Like going blues, there anyway. blues. You just jump into the screen and you're in Volskaya. Yeah, magic of TV. But instead, you're but gonna have to sit down in your thinking chair. What and I'm think, actually think, gonna think. say, what I was actually gonna say is, the other reason you want to defend first is, you sort of reveal less of your list of your overall strategy if you can get that early hold. Like uh, mm. this, this just goes across all attack and defense type of maps, so escort and hybrid as well. By defending first, not only do you prevent the other team and any other team in the competition from seeing less of your actual map gameplay, but you have the opportunity to shorten the map as well, so you get you get a you get a quicker map overall, which uh, kind of helps you out as well in um, being able to prevent the other team from getting that gameplay against you. Because you don't want, especially if you're with a favorite team, your Flash Wolves, you don't want Machi to get good practice against you. Like that's enough. this is like a real meta kind of thing. This is like out of the game kind of kind of talk but yeah. at, at this kind but of level everything exactly, kind of counts it's valid it's valid. everything kind of counts <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to clutch too hard on straws but like you really really think like on a we're on a super meta level everything you got to consider including including all of the outer game stuff like <laughs> I'm really sorry i know it seems like i'm just know. laughing out of nowhere but on our i get the screen, feeling i get the feeling our, like no 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 i'm not laughing at anything to do with that on our screen that we can see production keeps putting nigel thornbury over my face I oh, here i just thought you were laughing because you thought you thought i was no no complete you're completely BS, right but, uh, you're completely yeah. right <laughs> but but i do kind of look like nigel thornbury <laughs> 
It's true. It it's true. true. It's true. You need an explorer's hat. <laughs> you need one of those like beige I just need to be, explorer's I just need archaeology to be jackets. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be smashed. No, you're thinking about it's called a pith helmet. Is that what it is? Yeah, like, yeah. like, like when you think of name. like stereotypical like Victorian era explorer in Africa, it's a pith helmet. What Elise wears. Elise yeah, yeah, Trailblazer. Yeah, yeah, it's a pith helmet. That's this name for it. Uh, and uh, you would do well. You would do well in the League of Explorers. You'd, you'd need you'd need jodpers, yeah. And um, then you just you need to be smashing. You know. However, that they're type of seals, that, that type of wear gongs. that type of wear would not do you well in the climate of Volskaya. No, I would it was be rather uh, cold. I'd be a little on the chilly side. All my hairs would stand on end. You know particularly, why? Particularly that? the ones in your face too. Do you know why your hairs do that? Because it's meant to trap a small layer of warm air close to your skin. It doesn't work. I just feel more cold. You know, I learn so much when I when I work with you. Yeah. Well, to be honest. Uh, I'm a wellspring of information. So uh, yeah, Volskaya, it's cold. That's what we've that's what <laughs> we've cold. I don't know who's gonna win this, but Volskaya is freezing. So really it's gonna be whichever team is packed a warmer jacket. <laughs> That's what's happening. That's what happens. Yeah, unfortunately, no one can pick skins, so you don't really get the, yeah, you don't you get the customized. Yeah, you can't get like the wear. Arctic Ops Zarya and all that shebang. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone else have you like don't a get winter the abomination skin? May, you know, which is like looks like slightly warmer wear. Like it's probably, slightly warmer. It's like she's gone from okay. She's <laughs> she's like living in Antarctica. Like she's already like warm enough for Russia. She, I think she's fine. That woman in that statue, she looks freezing. Let's see if Flash Wolves have warmed up for this one, because I think they're going to need it after Machi have had a pretty decent performance so far. We are going to see... Yeah, or the Sombra defense, which, which by the I, way... Flash I'm starting Wolves, to I, like this. Flash Wolves, I feel like, have somewhat popularized this in, in this particular tournament anyway. Yeah. They were the first team to it's really working. pull it out in the OPC. Zonda with the flank, he's going to be the one to try and So uh, they should know how deal to deal against that. it. Yeah. He's going to be the one to try and deal with Nones by the looks of things. And actually, they're all kind of going around for this one. Um, I guess checking to see if Machi were on this high ground. They're not, but Machi is still in a decent enough position. They uh, can just set themselves up on the opposite high ground, and the teams can just kind of switch a route. They have to decide when to engage eventually. What I like about Flash was is they've denied that big health pack. Yeah. A big part of the Sombra defense well, relies on the health pack control. No, they don't, but they deny it from the other team, which is important against the Sombra gameplay. Well, yes or no, because one of the other one of the other things though about the Sombra, right, is by hacking that health pack, even if you can't access it, you do deny it from the other team. So it actually just means this no could be a big kill. And that's oh, a really big yes. one, Zonda. That is a key opening, and they should be able to just kind of smash this one through now. Smashing. As Machi have committed, smashing as Zonda. Oh, he's actually going to back off. Machi committed to the rest of the fight, off into the room on the side, and actually pays off for them the five v five going Machi's way, even as they had lost. Kiyomi. I think Machi took a really good opportunity to take the fight. Uh, if they dive into the health pack room, that's actually an advantage for them because, they, again, they have the control of the actual health pack itself. Now, Zonda, while he got the initial kill into Kiyomi, um, Flash Wolves lost all their tanks and support, so you had Bacon Jack and Zonda just sort of chilling out on the sky where it's quite cold, and they couldn't really clean up anything else. They had to back off, which I like the discipline from Flash Wolves. Finally understanding, hey, we can't actually commit to this. Now Zonda on the McCree, what can he get done with that? Yeah, I think actually McCree really does need an Explorer skin with an Angel Thornbury face now that I think about it. That's going to be the sound barrier out, actually. Uh, Flash Wolves really want to that commit to this. Is oh, that is big. Actually, the ultimate didn't quite start channeling, so he will still have it for the second oh, point. Yeah, fair Not enough. as huge as it could be, and with that sound barrier out, uh, Machi can kind of keep themselves alive for a moment, but Flash Wolves committing enough to get the last few kills here. No. Not quite an environmental, actually, uh, but probably still going to go down anyway. Good self destruction but they're really back and forth and actually eventually Flash Wolves are going to start running out of mileage if they don't secure a couple more here but they should be able to get these last few out maybe a bit of a late commit from the ultimate out of DCR1 wherever I heard that before and he's not going to get much oh, here more, comes so. Kiyomi for round two yeah, though here we go Flash Wolves doing nicely here Kiyomi for round two indeed but uh no talk Jongi oh, oh he oh. almost got that hello Zonda's kind of late to the party here as well. This is the, the, the they problem. They didn't stick on the point. They were ahead. The way. problem for Flash Wolves is they failed to secure enough kills to actually get control over the cap itself. Now, so much time elapsed that Kiyomi actually respawned and got himself back onto the cap. Kiyomi was the first one to die. And he was obviously going to be the first one to respawn, but it took so long. Kiyomi made it back, used his tactical visor. Flash Wolves Ooh. should have secured the cap in that time before Kiyomi even made it. So you know those 1v1s you hate? Well, Kiyomo just won one, so... Uh, well, they're great if you yeah. can win it, but uh, I don't like the coin flip. Well, there's going to be the trade back now, actually, but... 
I mean, already I don't know if Flash Rolls even have enough left in them to kind of keep this one going there. Kind of isolated from Jongi, who's going to be forced to ult out. I don't know about this one. This is an interesting dead eye because really it just means no one can oh, get the point. Oh, he walked into yeah, it though. He didn't walk into it. He was pushed into it. That's actually that's a bit better. Of, yeah, that's a bit of a clever combo Call there. that one team play. Don't know if it was an accident or not, but let's assume it was intentional. That could be all Flash Rolls need to really establish themselves at this point. Looking a little bit more set up. That's a very interesting uh, oh, EMP yes. out there. Only going to get one trade back for it and Flash Rolls kind of sweeping up all the kills. That's kind of like one of those, I'm likely to switch off Sombra here. I got an EMP, why not use I it? I might as well. Up again He's actually not going to swap off the Sombra, so that kind of makes it less acceptable that he used the EMP there, because one Sombra versus like five members, even with EMP, look, you just don't do any damage, so yeah. that's not going to work she out She can hack yet. the planet, but she can't hack all six people at once. Yeah, well, I guess the EMP kind of does what she, that. What Sombra's really good at is uh, just kind of trolling Reaper with opening and closing the door yeah, on this that, map. That's really her. her and then finding yeah. Prison Volskaya at the top level of this map as well. Yeah, yeah, which you actually can't even get to in-game unless you ragdoll your way up there. But that's going to be a big commit out of Flash Rolls. Already good mileage to start it off. They can get no talk before the self-destruct, and that's huge for them. Actually, that could be the that's white That's a lot need. of kills. That's how the snowball happens and came over. And look, no Holy EMP. Yeah, he's still got the whole hog, and they've got a dead eye. They can actually keep matching off this even as the respawn come through because Matchy will come through with all six Zonda's misses looking make the for mistake. A oh Zonda good set up quick uh, grenade onto him to keep him alive this is going to be the zone off with the Dead Eye Ooh, all he needed was DCR one that was plenty as K-Momo had opened up with a whole hog as well to force the rest out and the nano boost onto Jongi means he's able to secure Kiyomi again that's as good as a second entire wipe because of Zonda's positioning he can clean up the last few kills they've got an ultimate out of Jongi to get the last mileage here push Matchy off this point they should be able to set themselves up for a cap here even without getting these last few kills because they can just kind of bump people off the point. The respawns are staggered for matching. They actually are getting the ult charge back fairly quickly because Flash Wolves are picking up the majority of these kills. Now Zonda has to stay alive. Oh, this is really important. That's actually, that's really big out of DCR1 as well because he's pushed the DPS away from the point. So they can't actually back up the tanks that were set up on it and match. He might have just saved that. Yeah, he absolutely did. They actually now get a window to defend. DCR1 did a really fantastic job. I want to touch up on the... On, now you're starting to understand how big of a difference the decision to save an ult versus use an ult. Had no nears kept the EMP from the first checkpoint, they could have Im immediately used that on their initial defense here on the second cap. And that would have made a big difference. They were put in a situation where they nearly lost. Flash Wolves got two out of the three milestones. That couldn't, ha that could have been totally different yeah. had no nears kept the EMP they from the first checkpoint. They would have had to get DC I want to save this for them but a good open out here already off to the side Bacon Jack in a lot of trouble they're all just going to have to kind of retreat here it's bought Matchy at least a couple of seconds Donna needs a good position for this dead I feel like the McCree is eventually uh, going to find not enough mileage but uh, for the time being yeah, they're trace. getting something done here they need to get a lot more kills if they can get two kills on a dead eye this would be really well, great good heavens would you look at the time oh uh, don't poke nearly, the head out nearly. Yeah, nearly 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 that was actually a clever bait out of real sorry not out of real out of Kiyomi and who's going to open up with a tactical visor that gets nothing especially compared to real man's one can't though with the respawn because he went down right at the top he of that. will die here he, yeah he will die but he actually bought a good couple of seconds can match him keep contesting this? I'm not sure. They're going to commit uh, a sound barrier, and well, actually they can, because they once can. again, the tanks are forced off the point. Flash Wolves, they can't close it out as close as it is to the cap, even as Zonda picks no talk, because the key members were killed. Now you're in the sort of opposite world where I kind of feel like Flash Wolves might have been better to fully commit there. They, You want to keep the positioning, because when you have control of the cap point as the attackers, you can pick up the defenders as they respawn, as they trickle back into point. That's the position you want to be in as the attackers. And then you can pick up the kills in a row. You already you already got 98.6 in terms of progress. That's uh, a lot to work with. Realment? I don't know about that. He just, what was that? He, I think, I think he, he jumped out of the way of a hook and died. And now Kemomo, okay. he also died, this time to bullets. That's the more conventional yeah. way. And Flash <laughs> That's Wolves, how you normally die. That's going to buy Machi a ton of time. Oh, Zonda! Uh. What? I guess, I mean, at 98.6%, they may just feel comfortable enough, but I mean, you they're, might as well have that time bank in the bag if you can get it. They're gonna play right into the EMP, so... Yeah. That's gonna... A, a good EMP will completely shut down all of these four ults coming out of Flash Wolves, and should give Machi just enough advantage to secure themselves a defense. Look, even if Machi get two kills, or one good kill off the start against a DPS, that's enough kills as the defenders to be able to win. 
Flash Tools need a lot here. They need a it so lot, much. A lot, a lot. There's going to be the EMP out already as Kant gets picked off. They've, they've actually, two. oh, they've survived through it. They've lost three. They survived through the EMP yeah, crucially. Nice. And they're trying to commit things to the fight now, Matchy. But they're just kind of getting themselves like no took good trade back to get two. Kill now he's actually he's a couple dead. of ultimate holders. But yeah, he's going to be dead. They're actually going to get the cap. Oh my goodness gracious that me. That went completely the opposite of what on paper should have happened. Now, I I, I think I, I think that's I'm going to try and, that's just I'm going to make happening. sense of the chaos. I'm going to make sense of the opposite day in Taiwan. Yeah, on Volsky, it's actually hot. Yeah, yeah, for example, in Taiwan, it's your birthday, but over here, it's not. It's true. That's not a joke, it's by the way. It actually, it actually is his birthday in Taiwan. It was uh, up until <laughs> 20 minutes ago. It was also Avril's birthday here. So, ha, yeah. you can't say happy birthday anymore. You've lost your opportunity. But if you are in Taiwan, you hey, can. you still got a shot. If you're in Australia as tweet, well, you, uh, if you're in at, Australia as well, you're still good. Yeah, that's right. Uh, tweet at I'm Avril Happy Birthday if you are in a time zone whereupon it is still <laughs> Avril's birthday. An acceptable time zone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, again, <laughs> I, I do want to be able to touch up on what happened at the end there. So, EMP went down. Cool. How old are you? 26. All right. Now we got that Carry out of the way. <laughs> so EMP went down. Flash Wolves might have to take a relook at this, but Flash Wolves immediately backed off into that narrow corridor, I believe. And three members, or it was three members that died from us, you know, they chased. You chase Flash Wolves into that narrow corridor. No, they don't have abilities, but they got so much damage output there, 6v3. They're going to be able to secure the kills, and it's exactly well what they did. EMP wore off, they came back with their ults, and look, they were already on two out of three milestone for cap. And they the, were in a really good position to then re recap, even though no talk of the double with the self-destruct wasn't enough. The EMP hadn't actually caught Bacon Jack either, so while Flash okay. was on that retreat, Bacon Jack was still just drilling damage into the back end of Machi, and because Machi didn't get kills, when Flash Wolves had the opportunity to re-engage, it wasn't uh, a numerical advantage, but it was a health pool advantage. I mean, most of Machi were already on three-quarter health. So here's the problem is, when the EMP engage happened, like I said, three members chased really hard into the corridor. The other three, they had to stay on the cab. They weren't in a position to chase at all, so they stayed. That turned into a 3v6 defense, what should have been a 6v6 defense with an EMP advantage, quickly turned into the favor of the Flash Wolves. So, just off a bad engage, uh, that really cost much, and I think they're going to struggle a little bit. Nope. And now it's going to be yeah. Flash Wolves' turn on the somber defense. Maybe a little bit of, uh, this See is how you can... do, this is how you do it. Yeah, maybe you're gonna be able to execute it better. Still, uh, kinda remains to be seen. Just because both teams, for now, jostling about the point. No picks either way. Bacon Jack, good hack. Whoa! Picking Cat, that's actually really big for them. But known as, still with a trade. trade back here, yeah, uh, not able to get that recall back to the trans... Translocator, I nearly said transcender. I don't yeah, know what's no, transcendence. Get back to yeah. the transcendence. Well, got a friendly maybe gonna say the transcoder, I don't know, just some... I'm not going to finish that sentence, that was going to be <laughs> terrible, huh? But in any case, it's actually still not gone either way. That was just one trade back and forth, and Machi kind of keeping the ball EMP's going up. on the point. Yeah, EMP is up, but Jongi is down, and Zonda, he's in danger of getting routed here as he's down out for the count. That's a running oh, that's a lot singly. Of kills. Yeah, that's really bad news for Flash Wolves. Doesn't matter if that EMP is there, if the team isn't. And this is going to be a pretty quick cap for Machi by the looks of it, unless something crazy happens. Bacon Jack is spending a long time chasing down Kant, and look, while he's getting the kills on Kant, the rest of his team is completely falling over. I've really got to credit DC. CR1 because he's done a great job of chasing down all of these kills himself. He's managed to, it's, he's almost like playing Genji but without the resets. He doesn't even need the reset because on a five or six second leap, he's able to just secure every single target he's been diving on. And they got a decent, uh, they got a decent bit of momentum to walk through now. They got five volts are about to hit. This is important, no EMP to play up against as well. Machi uh, are set to take, I would believe, at least two out of three for Milestone here. Yeah, and uh, Already kind of off to a good start with picking Sinclair. Now Bacon Jack as well. That's My goodness, they're just opening it up. They got the momentum on their side. Ultimate out of Jongi. But if they can secure the rest of the team, it's not really going to matter because this is just going to mean staggered respawns. Sinclair will be able to come in with attack fires though. See what mileage he can get out of it because Machi are starting to run thin on ultimates. Uh, he's not really getting much for it though. I mean, no still just kind of keeping in his space. Good. They're kind of getting some trades back, but DCI1 is doing the work as it is. Still holding on to an ultimate. That is a very late uh, sound barrier out of flash rules here. And the kills are continuing to go matchy way. That's a good EMP out of Bacon Jack, though. Crucially, because it stops off No Talk, who is the only one keeping Singler at bay. Singler has finally gone down again now, but that's all that uh, flash rules needed to kind of push Matchy off this point. I got a really question No Talk not using the self destruct there. I feel like he had plenty of moment to actually use the self destruct. He made the decision to actually chase down Sinclair 
just with his cannons, and I'm sort of in the position thinking, if he had just self-destructed, Sinclair would have had to either back off or die to the self-destruct anyway, so he would have achieved that job while maintaining a threat directly onto the point, no which time. may have even saved some of his teammates, so I don't know, I don't, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not too well, happy about that. He's just kind of, you know, recovered too well. He's, no, uh, talk more he's like got no rid of his, He's got rid of his self-destructive tendencies, so there we go. Nope, okay. Well, moving on. <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, Matchy looks like. You're gonna self destruct Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blowing up right here. Speaking of blowing up, there we go. That's the pick they need on just uh, Sigler again, going down at the top of this fight. Again, though, he will be able to respawn, but this time around, let's see if Matchy can get either a little bit more. Where the Flash Bulls are the ones to get more, as they already get the trade back. Good drilling down onto Kmomo, just focus fire onto him to take him out. But the trades are actually coming back for Flash Another to the point where probably can't keep this one going. I mean, the respawns are going to come in, but the walk is much longer for them than it is for Flash Wolves. So this should slowly start to swing Flash Wolves way naturally as the defender's advantage kicks in. Yeah, absolutely. Not only that, but uh, EMP is steadily coming up into every single one of these fights. Now, they don't come up at the start of these fights, so Flash Wolves can never, they can never initiate with an EMP, but they're coming up in the middle of these fights just when Machi want to be able to do a full commit, and then suddenly EMP prevents all the ultimates, and Machi have to back up again. Now they have advantage, now they have initiation. Yeah, big opener. Can they get a dodge? Nano Visor uh, gets a couple, but already being blocked off by the Diva, as it doesn't get much more. They're going to commit a sound barrier as well, but they're going to have to scatter real quick as this opens out. Zonda chasing some big people trace. down in an alleyway. This is uh, brutality, uh, though Soldier does tend to do quite well in the alleyways, as we saw in his cinematic. Uh, <laughs> in any case, that is a secure match. purely from that well-placed self-destruct, kind of forcing Machi back. I think Soldier only does well in LOAs on Dorado, I think, uh... Yeah, Volskaya is a bit of a difference. It's too cold. Near. He's only wearing a jacket. Like, yeah, he's not... He's not a bit more you want to be in the... You want to be in that Yeti costume that Winston has in one of his legendary skins. Can you imagine? Just Soldier wearing that exact same Yeti costume. That's why he needs a dad sweater skin. He needs to be warm for Volskaya. <laughs> Look at this, EMP about to come back on Life of Flash Wolves again, and every time this EMP is in play, Machi are going to be at a disadvantage, however, having initial kill on Sinclair, how do yeah. these soldiers keep again, dying I think like that, this? that was environmental again, so I think, I, I don't know. Or a suicide. He kind of took a dive, yeah. It's, or a helix yeah. rocket suicide. Was tired, sick of it. Uh, but in any case, Bacon Jack going down as well after that EMP means he's kind of not got enough mileage, and Jongi is just trying to route the rest here, doing what he can to keep this one alive, but he's kind of separated here. Just kind of flicking back and forth between this point and safety just to try and keep it alive. Yeah, the known is open on up. Only getting the one for now. And uh, the response coming through into the attack visor that has run out now. So they've been able to kind of outlast it. Placement of the self-destruct there, kind of getting counted out by the Maywall and Zonda starting to do the damage now, starting to keep this one alive for his team. Flash Wolves, they've still got plenty in the tank, but there's a big set of kills by Matchy. Just kind of out of nowhere, known as Finally finding the position. I like this contesting yeah. with the invisibility. You can't clever, even counter clever, that. clever. They are going to start getting the cap through. Now Matchy, oh my goodness, doesn't even re-go back to contest the point. And Matchy actually got it with more time in the time bank. That kind of came out of nowhere. And for Flash Wolves, I think losing Sinclair at the start to what it, it be a suicide or environmental. Three what times it, in a row. Whatever it was, losing Sinclair like that at the start is what I want to say cost him, uh, really cost him the fight because... Yeah, you can EMP, but EMP realistically does nothing without the damage follow-up. And if you don't have a soldier, which for 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 uh, Flash Wolves was a large chunk of the damage output, I mean, that's a big deal. Your EMP is a lot less effective. You can actually tell they didn't get that many kills if at all. Not only that, but the taggers are in a position where once they start snowballing the kills out, defenders are trickling, trickling through with the sort of staggered respawns. Yeah, sure, Kiyomi, uh, was it Sinclair? Sinclair comes back out, running out as a soldier. He's just gonna die straight away yeah, again. Soldier's squishy. 200 HP soldier just dies straight away again. And at that point- The man's cold, he's got no support. Exactly, he's, he's freezing, he's terrified. And the thing is, at that point, even though you are the defending team, known as is the one who's more entrenched, he's the one who's set up. Absolutely. You're actually the one coming onto the point, uh, essentially as the attacker, you're trying yeah. to dislodge swap, the uh, attacking team who has now set themselves up on that point. Now, a lot of the time it works out eventually because of defender's advantage. So this here is now an interesting situation because Machi did cap with time and Flash Wolves didn't, they get an opportunity 
to take this one. All they actually have to do is cap this first point, and this will be the first I... Assault Flash Wolves have lost in eight games. Yeah, I want to say Flash Wolves look more disciplined, but we'll see if, if that's enough to sort of carry them through for a full victory here, because it's not going to be easy for them to be the hold this one out. I don't not think anyway. All. There at the same time though, Machu do need to commit sooner rather than later, but kind of balance it finally. They can check getting... finds Ooh. Kant at the start and every, every time control? somehow. Yeah. Like Sombra or Tracer like, it doesn't they matter. They need to commit fast, but not overcommit. They know it should not be too... See if Machi can sort of get the respawns up. They had to sort of wait a little bit. You see Kant coming out from uh, from the respawn now, but just as he does that, no needs goes down. So every time Machi get a respawn, they're, they're always stuck on five members. Oh, Kiyomi, and again, yeah, they're just kind of losing seconds here. There's already half of their time gone, and actually... Flashwolves may be able to take this to a tie, in which case it does just go to Golden Boy. And they're going to get ultimates here as well, so I expect them to be in a position where they absolutely can hold. Now, Zonda needs to get this Tactical Visor if they want to get the full mileage with the Nano Boost. Otherwise, I feel like it's going to have to be Nano Boost, um, possibly Bacon Jake. What's been really working out for Flashwolves is they are getting these early um, pickoffs. If they can continue that, I expect them to be able to win. But uh, I don't know how consistent that can be. It's going to be big. And again, no one needs to make a point to not get caught. Oh, DCR1, DCR1 misses. yeah, falling a little bit short. But oh, they're just going to... Oh, oh, no! See ya. No one is trying to open up with this. Is, uh, Flashwolves have just kind of scattered off. And Straight now they're throwing Momo in his face. He is going to be able to close it off on Momo though. That could be just enough they need. But Zonda does have attack visor he can commit if he wants. And no one is he he's not able to set himself up here. Yeah, he absolutely should. Because if they secure this one, then it's just one and done. And they need to do it before Matchy's respawns come in. Just commit to it. There we go. Zonda opening out with it, but with the uh, grenade on, uh, the biotic grenade, and then the diva block up, he didn't really get much for it. Now they're committing to this point here, Machi, having just barely got the respawns in, can't make it down, but the sound barrier keeps the rest of the team alive as they get the t members down, and Flash Wolves, they just kind of stepped off it for a moment, forgot that all they had to do was contest. That was... I don't want to say out of nowhere because it was well set up by Machi and uh, they did shut down that one soldier ult that could have saved it, but that soldier ult from Zonda came way too late. I think I was looking for a correct moment to use it, and you never found the correct moment. I don't want to harp on about the current state of Assault, but... I think... I think you're kind of right. Flash rules, that was all them, at the end. Like, say what you... Whoever out there, like, say what you want about how Assault is right now, and I, mean, I, I, mean, I kind of agree with that. Good the job to time. Machi, by the way. Good job to Machi oh, for yeah, yeah. putting good Flash rules in that situation, but then Flash rules misplayed that situation. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, that's what happens when your fingers get cold. You just you can't press the Q button in time. You it's like attack visor it's like your attack visor, but you're still like, you know, you're like, uh, uh. <laughs> like the movements are too slow. Like, like it aims automatically, but your arms are just a bit too slow because they're cold. You've got to warm up first. By the way, uh. I had to stifle a laugh halfway through that game because you said nano boost and my brain automatically went banner boost. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Nano boost, nano noost. I, what is, did you make up a word? No, it's just, you just swap the consonants and, and, I just blew my mind. <laughs> God, God, the, God, the banner noost, I can't do this. The banner noost. Here news. I thought you self-destructed, so I'm not too sure what happened there. Well, any case. So, once again, Matchy's pick, map pick, went the way of Matchy. And that was... History <laughs> does tell. <laughs> That was assault. That was I okay, should have been okay, Flash Wolves. Okay, so I, I felt like this could have gone to a game five uh, with Flash Wolves winning this one and then Machi winning the next one. But well, that's not the case. I mean, Machi kind of had this down to match point now. Well, they don't kind of. They this do. This is a really unique situation for Flash Wolves. Just uh, to say the least. Like I said, if they lose this. Their ability to catch up the blank suddenly yeah. looks bad. Because this will be the, the second team they've games. lost there to. There are harder games. There should be harder games than this. Harder Hong opponents. Kong attitude, Such HQ, as the blank next again. Such as the next match against HQ. Exactly. That's ex that's meant to be more difficult than Machi. Well, and our understanding of these three Taiwanese teams after the first round, Robin, and this was not just evidenced by their gameplay, but then backed up in their match results, was Flash Wolves, AHQ Machi. And if we were going to put that into the wider context of the tournament as a whole, Flash Wolves AHQ Machi. Yeah. Right? So Flash Get Wolves lose. Yeah. I mean, even 
winning now, this is going to be like blank versus Hong Kong attitude we saw in the last round, Robin, where suddenly they dropped two maps having gone undefeated. Like, they were on the verge of being reversed. This is worse. Swept. Yeah. This, this is, is worse, worse because Flash Wolves are actually already in a losing exactly. position. And, I mean, in that particular matchup, the blank versus Hong Kong attitude, blank were making a ton of mistakes. Flash Wolves are only making a few mistakes. Matchy are just looking really good, and they're abusing Flash Wolves' mistakes, and Flash Wolves aren't abusing Matchy mistakes. So, win or lose, this is terrifying as a result for Flash Wolves, because our understanding may just shift to Flash Wolves, Matchy, AHQ. And it doesn't matter what happens here, next match, they have to play AHQ. Look, I expected a huge shakeup by maybe round Robin 3, but... This day one yeah. around Robin two Out match swinging. one is like wow, <laughs> wow indeed. This is this is happening. It is. I don't want to call it. I'm not. I'm not going to call it because it, it, Gibraltar could go either way still, which is going to be our next map. Certainly, uh, and it is Flash Wolves pick. Yeah, uh, look, it's certainly getting spooky. The, the team that has picked Gibraltar the most amount of times is Hong Kong Attitude. Yeah, it's kind of their map. They've had good. They've had some interesting results. Now they beat Blank on Gibraltar. They lost to Flash Wolves on Gibraltar. Now I don't want to. I don't want to put it in, in sort of a way. It's like oh X Y then equals Z. It's like mm. you know be because already this matchup has shown us why that isn't always true. Yeah. So like Flash Wolves beating Hong Kong Attitude, who then beat Blank on the same map, doesn't equate to Flash Wolves beating Blank on it at the same time because they didn't. Right? They, they lost to Blank. They literally didn't. They didn't even play this map, let's no. be honest. But they but did, they lost on Escort, and in fact, they lost the match as a whole, so... But, yeah, you, I think, I think, yeah, that, that's still a, a, a reasonable connection to make. I mean, even just in terms of um, maybe getting an idea of why they have pitched this map, mm. you know, given this... There's, there's, there's really, some, this is, some sort yeah, of link there that you this can This is sort of actually kind of unfamiliar, unfamiliar, Chir Rur -rur -rur unfamiliar territory i'm really struggling with familiar and territory today don't know what's going on uh, but this is kind of unfamiliar territory got it right that time for flash wolves so you kind of just look for any particular reason to pick any particular map and this is as good as any i mean you're looking at doing either this dorado or route 66 and with dorado and route 66 you've kind of got nothing to go on you don't really have any evidence right so all right, well, this is a place we did beat Hong Kong Attitude, who beat, like, for sure, yeah, better than nothing. And it is their pick. They just want to do whatever they feel is going to be best for them. I want to say that I haven't been really feeling... I, I didn't really feel K-Momo on the Soldier. That's just because you're too cold. That was on King's Row. Oh, right. Unless you want to tell me King's Row is also just freezing for some reason. I mean, it is in England. Why are there so many cold naps? Is there, no, it's, it is in there's England. a couple of hot maps. Temple Anubis and Oasis were probably hot maps. Watch when Gibraltar would be very warm. It's Mediterranean. It's a nice, nice temperate climate. Yeah, you're right. There is sunset, as, there's sunset as well. There's well. So it's kind of like that moment where it's kind of warm now, but it'll, it's going to get freezing It's going to get cold. Well, anyway. No, no, because it's temperate. Like, they actually have quite warm nights there around I, the Mediterranean. You know, I've totally forgotten what I was actually trying to say. No, but just but give it, me a moment to But it, it doesn't back. matter. Let's talk about the climatology of Overwatch maps. <laughs> this is far more important. <laughs> because <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, right? I, I mean, say you pick, it's like... No, 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 no hear me out. This is the real meta. This is the real meta that's going on, okay? So, Lee Jung Tower, Flash Wolves 1. It's warmer. It's kind of a more... Uh, it? that's, a, that's a subtropical, right? Okay. Uh, and then King's Row. England, that's a colder climate, right? Okay. Uh, Match Esports won that. And then Voskaya, even colder. colder. Match E won that uh, again. And I would say a little bit more convincingly. Now we're going back <laughs> to more temperate climates. So okay. Flash Wolves are favoured. I guess. I guess. What, what I mean, cold what, what map what is it? left for, for Match on map five? Because we're, we're certainly into the warmer <laughs> set of Overwatch maps. And we'd be going yeah. to. We'd be uh, back on to. Back on to hybrid. would have been a good we'd choice. Back on to hybrid. So. <laughs> I think the best they've oh, got boy. is Germany, but even then, they're into the sort of Bavarian area. <laughs> like, it's, 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 it depends on the season there. Like, they have quite nice summers, but the winters can get quite biting. Because they're not far from the Alps. They sort of get the kind of mid-continental... I remember now. Okay, so I yeah. also didn't feel Sinclair on the side either. So, <laughs> I'm glad came I Omo, finally joked with came you. Came and Sinclair... We're both kind of unimpressive on soldier. I mean, now, now this is the problem I'm having. Frankly, both soldiers disappoint you. Well, the, the good news is they have two other soldiers because Boak and Jack and Zonda both played, and particularly Zonda, who's shown himself to be quite fantastic on it. The problem with Zonda now is he's too good in the sense that you just want Zonda to play everything because if Zonda plays soldier, great, you don't have a Genji now. Zonda plays Genji, cool, you have to run someone else in Soldier, but that person playing Soldier is not going to be Zonda. This is the problem. This is the kind of problem that 
Flash Wars are running into. They don't have a flexible team like Hong Kong Attitude and and Blank, where look, you got two Genjis on that team, you got um, two soldiers on Blank as well. Blank have the most flexible DPS team, where you literally have two players that both play a single DPS role. You can be super flexible with that. And Flash Wolves don't have that, and they're, they're struggling to find yeah. a, com a composition where that's, they can really play to the player's potential. That's quite a good point, and I was actually going to touch on that. Um, I didn't quite get time, but on the very first uh, map where we saw K Momo actually on Soldier on Legion Tower, I felt like they were trying... Yeah, you spray the floors on them. Yeah, I felt like they were trying to uh, at least test out how their other players could sit in that DPS role for when they need to pull out 3 DPS, and uh, well, it didn't quite work, so maybe that is a weakness, but... That's conjectural. Let's maybe touch on that another time as we get stuck on into uh, the nice warm climate to watch one's broth room. Look at that sunshine. Look at, doesn't that look lovely? It's really blinding for the defenders, so I'm going to say that's an attacker's advantage. Yeah, sunstrike going into the first camp. I recommend that you just pull over to the side of the road and uh, let it pass. <laughs> but in any case, big dive here, uh, getting onto this mercy. Ah, oh, nice pick onto that's Realman. Cool. Big opener here, and that kind of... Uh, Kind of takes the floor out from underneath Flash Wolves with any potential for a defense. Board You're not going to be able to get the ultimate gone. up in, in time at all. And uh, now the rest of the kill is coming through. This is actually really good commitment by Machi and just very clean execution. Super scrappy from kind of both teams here, but I think Machi, they do come out on um, top scrappy. of that Scrappy? Were we watching the same fight? I mean, scrappy and that Flash Wolves are still trying and they're trying their darndest, but Machi executed that well. Now it's looking scrappy as uh, Flash Wolves try and swing back, but... Machi are the ones set up here. If Kiema gets off a good attack visor, he should be well fine here. But not quite going to happen as Bacon Jack sends him packing for a moment. Yeah, yep, yep. I don't even... Yeah. You're... I'll, I'll agree with so all of those yeah. points. I yes! Agree with all he of said those it! Points. He said it! I'm right! Oh, so, man. <laughs> Roll out the red carpet. Pixie is right for once. There we go. Well, this is uh, attack even visor. Even attack me. Visor. Come on. And oh, no. Realment with the res would suggest Flash Wolves are actually pretty well poised for this defense, especially if they pick off Kant. The res is okay, but I feel like it's too... It's too post-fight, like they need something a little bit more immediate in terms of impact. Oh, like uh, a tactical visor? And a nano boost? I'm, not, I'm more considering a sound barrier, like it, it's more immediately immediate impact to actually winning the game. Whereas you look at what Machi did is they immediately jumped onto Realment, got him down, got him killed. In that kind of situation, what is that res going to bring for your team? Uh, compositionally, I'm, I don't know. I don't know about this right now, but we'll see if Flash Wolves can make it work. They're going to try and go for the big dive here, but Nones didn't quite get himself up onto the wall, and uh, Kiyomi committing his tag visor didn't find anything. Zonda, on the other hand, he's trying to go deep, but he doesn't get it, as actually Kiyomi, with the last seconds of his, hunts him down and takes him out. This is still a little bit back and forth, and Flash will still have a race to commit, even if Matchy start getting the upper hand here. DCR1 going to commit his ultimate, but that is a pre-res ultimate. That a could end up costing... Oh, actually. but Realman, ah, he's Catch Andre Realman, DCR1 playing Hunter Killer Missile. They're taking him out and actually getting the second healer as well. Even after actually the nano boost went off and it's not going to get any mileage for that. So Machi, they should be able to set themselves up well to close out this fight if they can get a couple more kills. Realman, I don't think he'll be able to get back in time for a crazy res and they should be able to get a cap here. Now look at this, Kiyomi has been uncontested for the majority of the oh, defense Realman. now. Oh, Realman! Ah, swooping in to save the day does bring the team back. They don't really have any ultimates to go off though, so it looked very cool, but no talk is getting a double kill of all people, which should tell you exactly how this fight is going. Jongi, nice catch, but he's going to go down as he leaves his back exposed. And Flash Wolves, they're just kind of giving up ult charge at this point. And that is why I didn't get excited about the res, because it's I like... I did. It was cool. It was all shiny. It's, yeah, it looks fantastic, but ultimately... Get it, ultimately. Didn't, uh, it didn't give the kind of mileage that Flash was looking for. Like I said, two post-fight... Like, uh, there's not enough immediate impact. Ooh. It's just not the kind of ult that will really, br that will really make you... Give you the win in that situation. I don't know. No, you're actually completely right. I mean, it, it looks cool, but uh, yeah, you're, you're totally big, right. Big, but also, big deal is Kyoto. Going to what's on okay. the screen, by the way. Magic actually Five. picked up. <laughs> If I have to. Uh, Magic actually picked up a couple of quite solid kills there, which gives them a lot of space in this hangar. Kind of stops Flash Wolves from getting this high ground. Oh, no, no, no. Tranquility okay. has been experienced. There's actually a lot of ultimates out. Now they're starting to close them out. Got to kill Realman. There we go. Nice and quick one from Nones. They do lose two in that one, but definitely able to clear this one out. Now, Kiyomi, even in a little bit of trouble, is going to be fine. Flash Wolves don't have anything left to go on. Realman... 
He actually may be able to get back in time uh, for, for another get, res that for, feeds on bacon jack. Yeah, but it's not quite going to happen. What mm. they will get though is an opportunity for another fight. What they're really struggling with here is like shutting down no nays. Now, um, no old more Zonda. ultimates really to play with for much. Hello, Hello Zonda. Hello. What are you firing at? Uh, nothing apparently. Not even the gorilla that's jumping at him. And Zonda really struggling to get any DPS down in this fight. It's just all getting healed up. Real mess. This is res ah, This is play of the game. Massive res bait. This is like, I want to play the game. You're right. Yeah, but even then, they actually committed a couple of ultimates to it. So there we go. Jongi committed an ultimate. Oh, what was the timing on that? And how did Sinkler get kills with his biotic grenade? Okay, by rights, <laughs> Flashwell should have lost that because they committed an ultimate before the res went off. It didn't get anything. And then that person didn't get rezzed. But Flashwell's just won. It's like we're playing season one again. And, and what happened? Mercy meta. Um... Well, okay, let's put it this way. Sinclair, they got raised in a position where... By the where... way, I know, I just know Twitch chat is going to jump on me saying, what happened? Like, oh, this guy. I do actually know what happened. Relax. <laughs> just a talking point. I was actually going to answer you, but that's, uh, that's cool. If you don't really know what happened, I'll just, yeah. I'll just keep it myself. Then. I, I know. I just wanted to know if you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, play the game. Yeah, oh, here comes here the go. <laughs> Here comes Dragon Blade and there goes the Dragon Blade <laughs> yeah, yeah, extremely and quickly. And there it went. Kiyomi, he can't even close it in the kills with his tack visor. And Realman is about to get another Rez G Willikers. There it goes again as Singler commits the nano boost onto the Winston. Still Start winnable by Flash Wolves. Still very winnable by Flash Wolves indeed. Kaimoma could commit the ultimate to buy time, but he's not going to. Machi, you're actually short a couple of members. Thunder? I feel like Kaimoma could have done that if he committed the ultimate. And uh, Flash Wolves now a little bit more on the back foot. Z back foot, sorry. Zonda still an ultimate to commit if they want to try and secure this one right here, right now. And this is this right. is a classic case of Machi getting a little bit too eager. They, they're fully committing to all of these fights. Like, yeah, get super excited. We're really close to capping. Now you got six seconds left to go. Zero ultimates. Still playing into a tag visor. Zonda's in a great spot. Pretty soon, yep, down goes DCR1. There we go, and the res will be coming up during this fight by Realman if it goes on long enough, but it might not even need it as the kills are secured in, and uh, the Zenyatta is going to slowly float its way over to the cart, hoping to touch it. Payload, 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 but it's going to move like a stone as Flash Wolves find themselves a hold. Flash Wolves, I think they eventually got... They eventually tested the patience of Machi, mm -hmm. and Machi got... They, they they become less and less disciplined the longer that game went on to. At the start, they're a lot more patient against the Mercy. Rares, Mercy Rares came out cool. Thanks for the free ult charge, whatever. Yeah. Later on towards the, first the game. One, absolutely. Later on towards the game. But their, their reaction to the res got worse and worse throughout the match. Yeah. First one, fantastic. Second one, yeah, they, they kind of just lost. The things kind of just blew up in their face a little bit. Double kill from the bio grenade on Sinclair. Stuff kind of went wrong on the Machi side. By the time we got to the final res, it was a case of Machi completely committing ultimates, blowing everything. It's like they're not even considering the Mercy anymore. They're not even realistically playing around and the then, Mercy anymore. And again, a classic case of them just getting super impatient, super eager. We're so close to capping. Just go, you know, completely ham on this and just all thought of strategical play kind of goes out the window a little bit. Yeah, and then when the res did come through, you could almost see them throwing up their hands in frustration, like, oh, we got to kill them all again? And like you said, you know, kind of tested the patience. And as it turns out, Machi did not have enough to actually push that through. That's not even second point there. It's, it was decent distance, yeah. so there are plenty of places Machi can find a good defense on this. And we have seen them, I believe, actually first hold that point. I may be thinking of Hong Kong Attitude. In any case, this is still quite achievable for them, but certainly Flash Wolves now looking a little bit better than they did a moment ago. The other thing is, now, Nona's had some really good moments on the Genji. That did push Machi ahead in a, a decent amount of fights, except towards the end, he never actually found Realman. Uh, credit to Realman, who, who had some really good hiding spots as well. Some real play of the game kind of style of hiding spots, which really worked out for Flash Wolves. Um, but yeah, Ma Machi totally went from thanks for the free ult charge to wow, how are we going to kill everybody? Um, oh dear, K-Momo, he's going to be able to get back from this one. And uh, this is a very deep setup from Machi. They're just going to lose is, members here. This yeah, is, well, this is the blank defense where you lose a lot of members at the start by doing this kind of thing. Yeah, this is how they lost to Hong Kong Attitude. See, just gonna and I'm going to say the exact same thing I said in this in that match, which is if Flash Wolves got super aggressive now, kept one play on the cart, 
and denied all defensive positions position out at Machi, they can just take this first checkpoint. Easy. Just simply like that. They're not getting aggressive, which is a mistake. They're just stacking card. And they can get so much more of this. They're it's not like punishing they're going, hard enough. It's like they're going, huh, that was weird. All right, well, now let's play as though they're Yeah, yeah, let's properly. play like it's normal. But yeah, they, yeah. they could but have they, taken They, they had an opportunity, advantage. and now actually losing Zonda means they're really going to struggle here. Sigler as well committed his biotic grenade onto himself, having already got the anti heal on him, got nothing for it. And they just kind of let themselves get routed, absolutely not taking uh, advantage of the opportunity presented. Flash walls. You know what Hong Kong Attitude did correctly in the same situation? They uh, all they ran. actually won. Yeah, they did win, the but here's how they won. They ran through the, underneath the car wash into the server room on the right side from the attacker's perspective, right up the ramp, right up the stairs, onto the battlements, and as the attackers, they captured that back battlements right here where Restia's standing before the defenders could even get back there to hold it themselves. Because they denied that super important defensive position, there was no way for Blank to get back onto the point. Now, Flash Wolves, you said it. They just played it like nothing happened. Big mistake. Yeah, and uh, Machi, they're milking it now for all it's worth. They've taken that opportunity to get a defense in and they've kind of run with it now. I mean, Sinclair, even when this nano boost is kind of having to back off because he's so low on health, he's only getting picked. Cut's got good movement. No Look cut. at the cut. Yeah. Machi have actually got the picks. They've got the advantage, but they're not committing. They're not stopping. Oh, dear. What? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Machi, are you kidding me? It's, 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 they, just, they just watched it. They just watched Like, oh, look at Flash Wolves go. <laughs> yeah, yeah they look, they're getting good card movement. Yes, they certainly are, teammates. Which one of you would like to sacrifice yourselves on the card? Not I. No. <laughs> Not I neither. In fact, no, how about we just watch? How about we, let's just enjoy the sunshine before we have to go inside. Uh, <laughs> I think so, I it. They all just well, kind of ran the game, is, came over yeah, the the game is still going on and now everyone's just kind of oh, throwing ultimates around. I, I, I've kind of lost track of what's happening here because Machi won when Flash Wolves committed all the ultimates there and then they... I, I, all right. This is what's happening. The opposite of whatever should happen. Both teams have five ultimates, which is kind of like, that's kind of cool, but Flash Wolves <laughs> are the ones that need to actually, what, why is <laughs> that's that funny? Kinda, that's that's kind of cool. Well, let me tell you what's, let me tell what's happening. Ultimates, let me tell you cool. what's going on. Flash Wolves need to be able to initiate off this, and they're gonna get initiated by Machi now. That's big for them actually, getting that pick right at the top onto Realman has really opened this one up. They didn't get too much with the tactical visor, but that being the only thing they've committed has bought them a lot more time now. Flash Wolves having lost uh, a few good members here and the rest are quite low. Ah, oh, there's another one. Look at them go. Is it because everything sounds kind of like just unimpressive, like, oh, five ults are both, so that's yeah, just cool. it that's, just, that's unimpressive. Frankly, both ults disappoint me. <laughs> Frankly, all ten ults disappoint me. Yeah, it's just not enough. But you get my point, Flash Wolves are in a sort of position now where they're not charging ults on five of their members. K-Momo can't actually charge ult very quickly either. They're in a position where they're actually losing a lot of time and a lot of momentum here. They're actually in a winning position and they need to be able to initiate. They have to start a fight and get a lot of mileage out of this. But they aren't even getting picks at the top of these fights. Known is opening up with his ultimate here. They can Jack Fighty throwing one out, but they're on the verge of losing Sigler. That's a good hook by K-Momo. And that should be all great. they need. Yeah, they didn't quite they close out the kills earlier. on anyone. Look at how much health Sigler has. It's barely anything. They couldn't get Bacon Jack, couldn't get Sigler, couldn't get Zonda, and it was all ultimates committed for Flash Wolves, but it is going to amount to a cap unless again something crazy okay. happens by Machi. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm not gonna count them out. I mean this has been a bizarre game as it is. Let's see what happens. Flash rooms, there we go, getting the picks. It's no talk. One man carry. Here we go. No, not quite gonna happen as he gets picked off as well. This should be Flash Wolves. It is indeed Flash Wolves putting it through, which proves that Flash Wolves do win in warmer climates. So see, so Flash Wolves just needed to find the right engagement. At the end, they did. I got a credit came over for those hooks. Now, not only on the second cap attack, but also on the first attack. When Machi were playing spectator on the battlements, just watched the cart move, a couple of them eventually did try and contest it. And what they contested into was K-Momo sitting there like, hey, thanks, thanks hey, for- Hey, it didn't get play of the game. Thanks for, I'm not even gonna acknowledge it. This is so- This is, this is it actually this is, is. This is play of the game back. Like, this is what you do in solo so queue. We anyway, just wait for your team to die. Everything is so unimpressive. Anyway- This is the worst. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> everything is so unimpressive. What is impressive is K-Momo Consistently landing this host, consistently getting those picks, and right towards the end, it was all Flash Wolves riding the momentum, the snowball of four ultimates used. The last Earth Shadow by Jongi as well, 
yeah, it could have been used, couldn't have been used. The good news is because he actually did use it, secured the kill onto, I forget who was playing the Tracer. Whoever was playing the Tracer on Machi, now I, I, I don't think it was known as, but it might have been known as, but I'll just leave it at that. Got that kill. Transcendence came through from Machi as just a delay tool. Like, it literally didn't heal anybody. It could have healed the Tracer. That would have been good for the Tracer to do some damage output. Um, would have made it a lot more difficult for Flash Wolves to actually contest that final defense. But because the Transcendence was totally wasted on a stall, by the time the rest of the members came in, it was just trickling members. They had no way, much he had no way of actually defending that anymore. Didn't realistically have any ults left to play with either. So Flash Wolves, for all the mistakes they've kind of made today, for everything they've kind of done weird or wrong or not super efficient, they set themselves up to win in the final moment extremely well. There's a really good set. It's not, it's not, it wasn't an accident. It was a full setup for a victory and they executed it well. Yeah, credit where credit is due. The only thing is, I honestly that feel like is the real play of the game. I honestly do feel though, up until that point, that entire game was actually just decided by who made less mistakes, right? Up until that final play, you're actually completely right there. But I mean, like honestly, from start to finish, like when Machi were on attack, uh, they were winning a lot of the fights that you know on paper they should have lost, and vice versa. And then on defense. I mean, first of all, Flash Wolves kind of flubbing that offense where they had a huge window, right? It's like, oh, yeah. it's like the ranch slider was open and they just sort of like looked inside and waited for Matchy to walk up to the door, close it, and then, <laughs> yeah. but then But then what happened is Flash Wolves sort of like looked around and went, this is ridiculous, punched the door open, like just smashed the glass, and then Matchy just kind of like watched and like, mm, that's a lot of shattered glass. And then... <laughs> Flash Wolves kind of walked past them into their house and they're like, oh, I should protect my stuff. And then ran further and, and like, they just, they just watched. Much, I don't know. Machi playing spectator was, mode was I incredible. Feel like, I, I, I don't know. That was so okay, surreal. For this game five, I hope you don't need to go and get another batch of two minute noodles. Cause I can only imagine that you were sat there with your second bowl and you didn't take a single bite. Cause the whole time you were just stuck still like. That's honestly how I felt. Like what at is various yeah. moments? I, I didn't, I moments didn't finish my game, noodles that game. I, uh, at various moments in the game, I, I was kind of like, I should say something now, <laughs> but this game is blowing my mind in ways that yeah. I, I can't explain. I just, I just kind of wanted to watch. Like, I want to be much. I want to know what much yeah. feel like <laughs> right. right now, so that I can really and just get only watch the, the game and not even yeah. play it. Like that's yeah, what I wanted to watch. feel. <laughs> that's, well, that's the thing. They, they just wanted to know what it's like for us. <laughs> well. <laughs> We're going to be going to a game five. So there we go. And you've got plenty of I time to it. go and crack out the two minute noodles. In fact, uh, maybe cook something a little bit more intensive because you're going to get a whole four and a half minutes before we are back with game five. So don't go anywhere. Hope your noodles are well seasoned and tasty because you're going to need them. Welcome back to the official English broadcast of the Overwatch Pacific Championship. If you're only just tuning in now, first of all, your noodles took far too long to cook because you've missed the first four games. Second of all, we are about to hit up game five between Matchy Esports and Flash Wolves. And uh, don't even know if we expected to go to a game four, but here we are. And we both said if this went to game five, we kind of felt like Matchy were favored. I'm kind of saying that I, I kind of thought we were going to go to game five. Also, PS. I oh, yeah, here, right. Now that we're at a game five, no, I thought this was going to happen. I knew. I just didn't say anything. After map two, I was like, I think we're going to go to game five. And I will say, I will still say, if now that we're here, you said it as well. I think much. I said win. it. You said it. If you, you'll know it. Yeah. I know it. Yeah, you, anyway. you know it. Everybody knows it, right? It's the <laughs> worst kept secret. <laughs> we go to map five, and much I think we go straight only, to map five. Not only are they get, they get the map pick and the side pick, they also get to get the door coffee. <laughs> um, let's look at our remaining map pool, though. So we have we have Eichenwald, we have Hollywood. Um, yeah, and like I said, I feel, like, I feel like I feel like they're gonna maps. go for Eichenwald uh, based on climate reasons. I feel like I don't have enough statistical it's background like, to really. Like, I don't have anything to go off, so I'm just gonna have to. I, I, have, I have to go off my bogus climate theory here. That's all I got. I think Flash Wolves are decently strong on Nibani, so that may not be a good pick for them. Mm. I think. Look, you're right. I think. I think actually, you do take the Icon Wall not for the reason that you stated, but for the reasons mm. that it's a not. It's not a well played map for Flash Wolves. Mm. Flash Wolves and a practice on just about every other map. I don't think. From what I can tell, look, I, this is coming from a position where I don't know what the scrim results are like, but 
for everyone, generally I can wall this at the bottom of the pile yeah. for maps that you actually go for. Well, and like I said at the start, if you're marching and you have the pick advantage, why not throw why not? in something like that? Exactly. And the other thing as well, I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but I kind of want to take that one step further. I would say we know pretty well. Maybe that's a little bit different given the other results of tonight. Maybe this is no longer true, but up until now, we've known pretty well. Uh, Flash rules, I would say they're favored against Matchy on both Numbani and on Hollywood, I'd based on so. their other results on those maps. Well, well, yeah, that, um, that all goes slightly thrice and hand me to my mama. I was actually going to say, I feel like based on that, maybe you do just throw it to Climate wise, this is the purely wrong choice because, as well. Purely because uh, Flash rules would be untested. But yeah, Numbani, and this is. This, That's Africa. This is so far you, yeah. too temperate for Matchy to win. This is Nigeria. Like, this is. No, this is Nibani toasty. Is, Nibani is its own country. Come on. No, it's not. It is. It's a city. It's a city in Nigeria. Really? Yeah, in, in Overwatch. Numbani oh, is a city uh, in Nigeria. I'm going to have to Google that anyway. That Google will tell me the answer. what it everything. is. You know, I've eaten Nigerian food once. I was eating Nigerian food uh, on Old Kent Road. This is not a, okay. this is not a lie. This happened. Um, and... Um, Harrison Ford Take your walked word in. for it. I'll take your word for it. Harrison Ford walked in. Harrison Ford was at that restaurant with John. I'm going to say his last name totally wrong. Boyega, the guy who plays John um, Boyega. But I don't know. It's, I, don't, I don't know. That's how it's spelled. But plays Finn the human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he plays Finn the human in Star Wars. Um, Star Wars time. Um, so they they honestly walked in to this restaurant and started eating food. And like everyone was real chilled out about it because they're like, I don't care, I'm just here for the food. Because it was really good food, right? And then a couple of months later, I was watching the Graham Norton show and John Boyega told that exact story of taking Harrison Ford out to the Old Kent Road to get Nigerian food. And for everyone that didn't believe you, you're like... Yeah. It's happened. You can look it up. We got a we got official confirmation that it is in Nibani Nigeria. is somewhere so, near Nigeria, not not officially in, but somewhere near yeah. Nigeria. Oh yeah. Uh, that's good enough. I that's a, thing that's a good enough victory for you. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. I like how they started just naming the other destinations after like the name of the map. Like, oh, would you like to go to Volskaya Industries? Like, no, I'd like to go to Russia, but <laughs> all right. If I could only go to that one specific place, then I guess. Now. I was going to think, like, do Machi go for defense first or attack first? I still think defenders, it's good to go defense first for all the reasons, for all the meta reasons that I listed earlier, being that you deny... Pre actually, no, it's actually, it's actually probably preferable for Machi to want to play Flash Rules more. Um, Flash Rules probably want to play Machi less in, in, in the sort of meta feeling where you don't want to play the what? lesser favored team what are you as much. <laughs> they're you gonna did play, this to me like, oh my god. They're going to play each other. No, I'm sorry, they're going to play each other. What do you mean, play them less? I mean, they're uh, already playing each other. I mean, well, they can't just play them less. Yes, like, you can. Like, Flash Wolves are just like, yes, I'm taking can. my hands off my keyboard. Yes, I don't want to play can. these guys. <laughs> Machi literally didn't play the game on, on Gibraltar first checkpoint when they just stood there. So, I mean, yes, you can. No, but in, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, if you get a full first point hold... <laughs> You're playing the game less. You just play less. It's a real meta I mean, look, stretch, I feel like the reason cares? Flash Rules want to play less is because they have to play HQ after this. I don't know. They want to, don't want their fingers to be too sore. So anyway. Like, okay. I'm like, not to completely poo-poo you there, but you you do kind of make a valid point. Um, I've said it twice. Get, now. I think yeah, that's enough. Get, yeah. That's enough for one evening. Well, let's, uh, let's look forward to it tomorrow. Goes. Resty actually two changes. Changed over to Lucio and then back to the Mercy. So... Maybe a bit of indecision, but in any case, Flash was a bit well set up on this defense. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Nones' fair early on the night on Lee Jung. Be interesting to see if he does a little bit better here. It is going to be very good against Realman's, um, Realman's Torbjorn here. They are going to get a lot of pressure on that. Tarad, oh. nice kill by Zond to start things yeah, off. Yeah, really great good open up there. And uh, Realman's only losing the turret. Like, that's that's not even a teammate death. That's not a trade back at all. Matchy. It's like half teammate. I mean, they've sounded it out at least, so. It's at least on the level of a bronze teammate, so you got something going for no, because No, no, because the turret can actually aim. Uh, aim the turret, the turret's got an aimbot. You're not even wrong. You're it's, not even it's wrong. It's better than bronze because it's got an aimbot. Well, <laughs> save coming, us, please. There we go, coming in now. Again, the turret going down. I mean, the bronze teammate is just such dead weight right now. Uh, but the trade back is actually there. I mean, again, this is kind of magic struggling, but 
is a little bit scrappy at this time around. I think if Reshi can get a raise up in time, they might be able to make something happen here. In fact, they're making it happen despite uh, not having the raise as Zonda picks out um, Reshi. So, I mean, Machi, they look kind of poised to secure this, even as they're trying to close off these last few kills, but they do kind of need to do it quickly because oh. Flash Wolves do have an opportunity to swing back. I don't think they should, but... Heck, they're going to go for it anyway. So let's see how Machi actually hold this one out. As, they need uh, Kant alive here. Yeah, Kant already a deep die. dive with the Kant mana boost die. on. Yeah, again, they've lost Kiyomi. Restia is again coming back into this quick smart with a raise available. So bit of a bit of a commit from Flash Wolves has kind of forced Machi back. And I don't think it was needed. And for Machi, they spent so long trying they to get... They played the game less. They, they spent so long trying to secure their cap and secure the final kills. The first deaths from Flash Wolves have respawned and retook. This is a very difficult first checkpoint to attack because the defenders actually have a closer spawn. And for Machi, they need to be securing a lot more because they need a lot Whoa. more momentum. No talk going down as he commits his ultimate. So even if he Good gets pressure on the it, yeah, Jack. Even if he gets something with it, he won't uh, be able to really keep affecting the fight after the fact. And yeah, Cash just getting out Bacon Jack from that one. Oh, right into the, right in the room. Sure thing. And he gets Realman for it. So Machi, well set up in this one. Only losing Kiyomi is a very late ultimate to come out of Jongi here. Uh, but DCR1 committing his own should be able to keep the point on lockdown as Zonda. He's having to retreat, and he's not even exactly retreating towards his own base. So, a bit of an unfortunate spot for him as he's now trying to regroup with his team. And uh, actually, one HP, oh. yeah, one HP indeed. Not quite going to happen, but Machi, yeah, well enough set up here. Surely that they can just catch this one through. And already Flash will swapping off, picking uh, Realman onto that. Okay. Mercy for what I imagine to be a later defense. Uh, uh, Flash aren't giving this one up just yet. In fact, they, they're still no, going to get they should. There. Yeah, this which we talked about there earlier as well. Flash Wolves are always in a position where you feel like they should be giving up fights and they're not. And now, now, they're they get, oh, now they're just going to get trickle, respawn, and round. Kimomo suicided, but they still fit a kill over to CCL1 anyway. We talked about this already, but Flash Wolves in a situation where they should be falling back. They don't. That's three deaths. Three extra deaths that could have been avoided that they gave away to Machi. Yeah, I like the swap off for Nones as well. It was clearly just a strategy to break that first point. Unfortunately, it means they actually lose the res, which they'd only just charged up. I do prefer the Lucio pick through here, but I mean, not having that res, I don't know how much it's going to affect it, but at the very least, they won't be able Speaking to... Speaking of no res, Realman. Yeah, well, not yet. He only just changed. Speaking of no res, well, that's an interesting commitment here out of uh, Flash Wolves. They're kind of half committed as Kant in a good position to, at the very least, cut off no nez. This is a total yeah. waste. He so got nothing. Not yeah. well, well, no, no, no. What he got is he stopped Bacon Jack from affecting the fight, at least for a few crucial moments. And that is just kind of payload distance. It's a, not a ton of payload distance, but that was Flash Wolves committing to the fight. And they kind of got hamstrung. So it hasn't really worked out, but I can at least see the thought. It's going to be a committal out of Flash Wolves now. It's both DPS ultimates, and so far they haven't really gotten any kills. And the zone has been really, um... Is this solo queue? <laughs> Everyone's just throwing out ultimates at strange times. It's bees around honey, right? Everyone's just kind of hanging around the payload, just scrapping about, throwing out ultimates whenever. Sometimes having a bit of a duel off to the side. One guy gets picked, another guy gets picked. These guys are both kind of lacking the coordination. It's like something is just it going does, to their heads. It does feel, it does feel a little bit random, but Flash Wolves are applying timed aggression. It is coordinated aggression. No, the ultimates didn't really get the kills. It does force Machi off. The problem is they're not feeding ults back into their team. Losing Bacon Jack nope. early as Rest well. Now Machi, they're going to have the ultimates ready to actually turn on the heat. They should be oh. able to count this out. Good sound barrier to you save no there. Gives them plenty of time to uh, bring his health back up. And uh, Realman blowing the race early means that these teams are kind of even in ultimates. But no, Bacon Jack strikes back, taking out DCR1, which means they're in a pretty good position to get this fight ahead. Flash Wolves here. Jongi going to have to pop the ultimate to stay alive, but they picked off Kiyomi. So that is a secured fight. They're happy enough to blow that ultimate as match here on the retreat. Flash Wolves, they still just managed um, to find ways, and they're not using a super high amount of ultimates to get this done as well. Which has been really to their credit, and Machi is sort of in a position where, similar to where Flash Wolves were on their attack on Gibraltar, Machi need to be the ones to initiate here. They have all the ultimates. Four of their members are now no longer charging ultimates. These four members need to be able to spend it somewhere. They don't have a decent amount of cart movement. With 44 seconds left to go, any more time they lose just gives Flash Wolves more opportunity to charge their ults back up. And Flash Wolves get the initiation here. They might still be able to hold. That was very deep from Jongi. Didn't really have the team backing him up there as the demon had gone too deep. Uh, Nones 
That is unfortunate. Good boy, yeah, that was. Uh, it, well, he didn't actually quite start the Dragon Blade completely, but they did commit the Nano Boost to it. And uh, I mean, that's still an ultimate committed. So now they're going to have even less when they do come back in for this next fight. And once again, Flash Rules commit well. And Mashi now only have this one fight. Oh, and the problem for Mochi is even if they commit ultimates here, Real One does have a res to immediately get his team back up. Expect Zondra to pull the Dragon Blade out as well. Mochi, they had a room to do it. They only committed one ultimate. All right, here we go. Zonda going to commit out his Dragon Blade already, having picked one off, and uh, they're not getting anything out of this one. Matchy, they've got nothing to go on at all. <laughs> Even the one onto Realman. Oh, getting actually, Realman might just be all they there, need much. if Nones gets a big Dragon Blade, but he's just not, he's not finding enough with it. The self-destruct is really all they can commit now, but he's going to have to commit it. He, there it goes at long last. Whew, had me sweating for a second, but he doesn't really get anything anyway as Zonda actually closes off on the Diva, and there's no one really here to contest the cart. They're just kind of trickling in. The overtime is going to disappear quick, smart, and Flash Rules have done a good job so far of minimizing how much Overwatch they're going to have to play. Yeah, I think for the amount of Overwatch being played so far, Look, for Flash Wolves, there, was, there were a lot of moments, actually from both teams, realistically, that it did look kind of messy. You're right, players were kind of throwing in ults here, making engages. For Flash Wolves, though, some of it, 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 there is a little bit of sense to that because they were the ones on defense constantly actually initiating at the marching now because they were able to start the fights and start the fights that they want to in the positions that favored them. They are able to get the early kills on Machi pretty much every single time. The one time that they didn't, Realman blew that early res. Now, that could have gone quite horribly for them, but Machi never really turned up the aggression at any point, even after getting the early kills, even after forcing the early res out. You didn't see Machi really commit to the fight, but Flash Rules, they always did, and eventually Machi got put in a position. Four ultimates available, used the nano boost, denied the Dragon Blade. They're still sitting on three else. They're still right back on the drawing board, exactly where they were. And before you know it, you got 30 seconds left to attack. Yeah. And Machi, you've run out of time. Now you exactly. want to use your ultimates? Too late. Exactly. And the thing is, this is really bizarre because, I mean, we, we talk a lot about these teams sometimes over committing, sometimes going in when they really shouldn't. And now a couple of times, I mean, I haven't really touched on it, but a couple of times now, we've actually seen Machi then also do the opposite, where they could actually just fully commit to the fight and probably win it. Someone's playing Orisa. I can actually see it right they now. They don't, well, um, just, I'll go on we'll to get that there. in just one second, but uh, yeah, we, we've kind of seen them do that a couple of times, Machi, and they kind of did it again there, you know, when Real went threw out that res. Actually, Machi could have just doubled down. Instead, they decided, oh, let's play safe and back off, but you can't always play safe, and there is a time when you shouldn't play safe, and they don't really seem to have a sense of when they should and when they shouldn't. Flash Wolves, Orisa, they're not going to run it, but they are actually a team that has run it on this first point offense here. They have the sort of varying degrees of success, uh, to varying ranging between to. laughable to, yeah, that was acceptable. That is quite a range. Yes, <laughs> quite the range, but at least they got me entertained, which is quite good. And both teams really going for the sort of Torbjorn defense here. And both teams also responding with the Ferris, so... Oh, Restia oh, needs to be careful not to eat another rocket there as he loses his turret. Gonna be able to get topped off now, trying to get the turret back out and affect the fight, but actually, Flash Wolves haven't already lost Ruin, might just have to back off on this offense already, even if they get more picks out, just because they don't really have the healer. Okay, early pick on the Zonda does, a, does relieve a decent amount of pressure, but Flash Wolves have full control on the upper battlements on, I would say, the left side from Attacker's perspective. And really, for Kant, he's going to struggle to really pressure this one out. For Machi, though, they have their sort of respawn a distance advantage. You can see the early respawns already coming back in. Yeah, Flash Rules, they've sort of failed to apply enough money. Well, Bacon Jack shut down. Yeah. No, no one visor. is in uh, Bacon Jack's sights at all. Got nothing for that one. It's a bit of an awkward nano boost onto DCR1, but he did at least secure a couple of kills with it early. Didn't get huge mileage, but they got just enough that Magic can uh, cut themselves happy. But now they are looking a little bit lean for ultimates, especially given that Flash Rules will have a res for Tactical this next fight. Uh, unless Realman gets picked off right at the start. And I want to see Flash Rules be able to actually convert further kills. But cool, you got a couple early. You got a couple of kills at the start. You denied ability uh, for for much to be able to contest your side of the battlements. Now what are you going to do? Flash Rules kind of sat there. Um, really didn't, really didn't try and convert any further kills or play any further pressure. Kant here is actually kind of exposed. They might be able to catch him out potentially. 
But first they need to secure their battlements once again. That they do. Realment has the res now. So even if flash calls get wiped, they can just bring that back. So Machin needs to be careful not to commit too many ultimates here. And they're already going for it with Nones on attack. Visor. And it's going to be the res. And it's actually a little bit too early. As Zonda does not get caught by it. That's one less ultimate flash calls to have. As here comes the open up from DCR1. Jongi going to answer with his own. But Sigler is the one getting routed. There's no healers to back up Jongi now. There's only so much he can do as one lone angry gorilla on this point. Or rather, one lone angry scientist and Machi are uh, really holding nicely here. The other position now as well, where unlike Flash Wolves for Restia, he's able to he stayed alive for so long. He's dishing out all this additional armor for his team, changing up turret positions as well. Molten Core ready to go. I don't expect this Molten Core to go to waste like you saw from Realman when his Flash Wolves turned to defend. Um, Molten Core realistically now is going to be quite hard to defend, even with just an ultimate. I think Machi might have enough, um, they might have enough power Ooh. to save this. Yeah, they're going to have to open up with a... Unless they lose that turret yeah. so quickly DCR like that. one very deep with the Nano Boost on, and Sinclair had committed his own. I don't even know who he put it on because he didn't get anything with it. It's actually a Molten Core out of Restia, which is actually a good ultimate for Flash Wolf to draw out of Machi, but they don't really have much more time left, and Machi do still have, again, an ultimate left, and probably a few more going to be coming up during this fight, given that I expect it to be projected. If you want Flash Wolves to play a really tight game, that was the last fight they could afford to actually give up. Now, you're right, they, they blew out an extra Molten Core from the other team. Cool, they got the whole hog as well. That's going to work in their favor, but this is the final opportunity. Two DPS ultimates, no mercy. They still have to look for the top. They only have a self destruct to oh, deal with. Oh, here we go. They are opening up nicely, getting it onto the turret. And uh, they've still got the Rocket Barrage held onto as well. But they're all kind of funneling into this room. They have actually it's picked Candace, paying, paying off. And uh, a lot of these Flash Rules members, they're a little bit low, but they're Zonda not going down. Zonda. Oh, that's a big one here for Marchi. If they can just close it a few more. They've got a Nano Boost to commit here. They're going to go ahead and put oh. that on DCR1, who is going to make mileage out of it as he picks off Bacon Jack. Now just trying to secure the last few. That's a big one. A good round of kills there. And they look set to actually close this one out and uh, Kimomo with the self-destruct may just find something cheesy at the end but it's not going to be anything big and my goodness Flash Wolves minimizing how much Overwatch they're going to have to play by straight up losing to Machi here oh well I, on one hand I'm really I'm kind of sad for Flash Wolves but look at the excitement from Machi yeah it's huge kind of for them it, but if we made it to a map 5 there it is Machi do take it up and it kind of just proves my climatology theory wrong completely I mean that's probably the warmest map we've been to yet and uh i mean it's the middle of the day in nigeria and they still won so there you go matchy they can uh they can beat you out in all kinds of weather whatever yeah. the weather you can't weather their storm i think for flash Wolves, inability to they they got to a stage where realistically earlier on especially against a 12 on composition you need to be able to get a certain amount of mileage then and there particularly on the on the cap um, the cat milestones. If you need to be able to secure a certain amount of cat milestones, this is before Torbjorn can really start to spread the armor out, before Torbjorn gets the molten core out, before the ultimate starts to really stack up the defense. Now, for, for Flash Wolves, they had a couple of early opportunities. They had the opportunity um, right at the start of the game where they, they did a great job of denying turrets from coming up consistently. They get the they got the early kills on DCR one playing um, playing the Winston as well, but again never had the opportunity or never took the opportunity to convert further kills to really apply for the pressure. And as the attackers, you are going up against a defense lineup that has the ability to quickly reinforce due to the respawn distance that the defenders have. And Flash Wolves just didn't play against that. And honestly, I feel like Flash Wolves just strategically speaking kind of slipped further and further and further as that whole series went on. In fact, I mean. I'm just going to discard Watchpoint Gibraltar in a way a little bit off the hat because Flash Wolves offense was just weird because of how both teams played it, right? Like yeah. it is impossible to really draw much from that, but you can still say, well, they didn't take an opportunity that was presented to them. So that is still something they probably need to tidy up. But I mean, I took another one, which that, is yeah. like, you don't want to defend yeah. cool cat. That's the thing. Aside from that, I mean, like I said, they just kind of slipped further and further and further. I mean, it was just, it was really, really bizarre. And We've talked about this a couple of times now when teams have these back-to-back -back matches uh, in terms of kind of mentally rallying. But so far, teams have either suffered narrow losses against teams close to them in the standing, and that's a lot easier to bounce back from. This was Flash Wolf's second in the standing, dropping to Matchy, I think, sixth in the standing? Yeah. 
That's huge. Huge for Machi, actually, yeah. because now well, Machi are, are, are so much better prepared or so much better equipped after this result. Sure. To actually break into not only the top four, but potentially I'll the jump top onto three. that. I'll jump onto that in a moment, though, because, I mean, for Flash Wars, who are now going to have to play another match, mm -hmm. that's against AHQ. As who the away who again. Are, yeah, as the away again. Yeah, this is against AHQ, who are directly below them in the standings, who they played in the first round robin on the first day. So that is a huge length of time between these two teams playing each other. AHQ have learned many, many lessons since then. And Flash Wolves, based on what we just saw against Machi, who did seem to have learned a lot of lessons in that first round, Robin, I don't think Flash Wolves learned as many. They may have improved. It's hard to tell because they did lose that one, but they haven't improved as much as the teams below them, at least from what we can see out of this matchup. So if AHQ have also improved, they don't even have to have improved as much as Machi. It just needs to be a little bit more to bump them over that edge be ahead of Flash Wolves, yeah. and now actually, Flash Wolves are staring down the barrel of a gun. I want to say that AHQ, I, I do want to say the, the difference I want to point out is Machi, because they were so much further down, I want to be able to feel like they have a lot more to prove. They, they, they have a, a lot more distance to improve, I think is, is the more accurate way of saying it. Yeah. Whereas for AHQ and Flash Wolves, yeah. because they're so much further ahead already, what they're trying to do is their goal is to catch up and overtake Blank, both of them realistically. Yeah. For Machi, their goal is to just sort of even get to the position where they can even they, challenge Blank. Yeah, they want to with. break back into top four. Yeah. And so for Machi, the rate of improvement that's available to them, is, they've got so much more area to get to that level, whereas again for Flash Wolves, maybe not so. Well, let's take a look at this interview coming on up. Exciting. It's going to be Kent from Machi as well. She says everyone was quite impressed with the performance. She是在國王大道的時候呢,你上二樓埋伏隊,是隊友要你上的還是你自己的想法。然後我當下就是反應就說 看能不能打出一個很好的效果,然後沒想到今天是打得還不錯。今天真的表現很好,再次給他掌聲好不好。好,接下來呢,還有問題就是,請問一下,你閃光表現的不錯嗎?那練了多久了? <笑> 那在聯賽中你覺得會排名第幾？閃光的話，大概第二吧，應該也沒人敢說第一啦。好謙虛哦。好，再次呢，恭喜MEC獲得這次的比賽。There's okay. so a, a few questions about Tracer there. Um, I think there was a there was a question. The second question I, I think had something I didn't really quite catch that. But what was really important that he said there, um, particularly from the third question onwards, was the hostess was asking. What was the deal with you playing Tracer today? And he can't kind of said like you know, he doesn't normally go with that role. He doesn't play that hero. But they were trying things out. They were sort of experimenting with that, and lo and behold, it worked pretty well for them. And he was quite impressed with that result himself. So the hostess asked, "Look, how long have you actually been practicing Tracer?" He said, two weeks." So after two weeks of Tracer practice, not too bad of performance. Yeah. And kind of at the end there, so she's kind of saying, "So where would you kind of rate yourself now, in terms of all the Tracers in the tournament?" And he kind of put it out there and said second. So I, I, <laughs> I don't know about that. Second behind who? It's kind yeah, of a question he's, there. He's yeah. basically saying it's like I don't know if anyone. I don't know if anyone kind of has the balls to say first. So I'll say second. <laughs> so there it is. Well, there you have it. He, and I mean, yeah. in their defence, I mean, call it an experiment, but their trial of putting Tracer out there and kind of switching up the roles, it went much better than Flash Wolves changing up of who was playing what DPS. And like I said, I feel like. We're now in an environment where Blank have topped the standings with a very effective triple DPS. You touched on this a little bit earlier in the night. Just super flexible. Yeah, right now no other team is as flexible as them in terms of who can play DPS and who can play what DPS. And other teams are now trying to catch up. Some teams 
are naturally going to do that better than others. It is surprising to me that between these two teams, Flashles is the one that seems to have struggled a little bit more, but at the very least, this is only the first game they've really had, like really trying to push that, really trying to adapt to what the current meta is. And real realistically, I think AHQ are in a sort of similar spot to Flash Wolves where they're now discovering, look, we, we may need a third DPS on some mm. of these map compositions. Who's gonna play that? And, and yeah. these Taiwanese teams are now putting supports on there, which has kind of mixed results. Like Sinclair's been on there now, um, K Momo, he's a, he's, I guess he's a flex tank, which is a little bit more acceptable. But, mm. you know, particularly when they're putting the Anna's, the Anna supports on there, some of the Lucio supports on there, I don't know. I'm not feeling the yeah. result of that. When you look at Blank as a difference, they're putting, um, they're able to put their flex DPS's on there. And, and to a degree, they're putting Trill on exactly. some of these. They're well, putting Trill on these DPS characters, and he's excelling. Yeah, because and he's, he's, he's originally a DPS player himself. And they've always been able to. Yeah. I think that's the other key thing here as well, right? It's not like, uh, it's not like suddenly triple DPS just emerges the meta and blank happens to be the team that was best at it, right? This is just, it's something they've always been able to do. And now that this is the meta, all the other teams have to catch up to that, right? It, that's, that's really all that's going on here. And, and like I said, we're going to see which teams do adapt and which teams don't. And this is one of those kinds of things that happens over these long form tournaments. You know, one team figures out maybe a slightly mm. stronger way to play. They kind of figure out the current meta or maybe they're just better at it. And we see how teams adapt to changing metas, to changing patches, to all those kinds of things. And that is where big shakeups and big upsets come from. And I am going to call tonight an upset. This is not yeah, at all the expected result. Three to one would have been an unexpected result for Flash Wolves had this match happened two weeks ago. But we are now existing in a world where teams must figure out triple DPS. And tonight, Flash Wolves fell short. And after this, we are gonna see if they have kind of fixed that up or if they continue to fall short, or indeed, if AHQ2 falls short, as it is gonna be Flash Wolves and AHQ coming up for our second match of the night right after this break. Don't go anywhere.